You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Hello Sport Podcast. I'm one qualified opinion and unwavering bias. We're back. Monday, in studio, phone going off, not on silent, my fault. You know what it was? It was Facebook telling me that it's Rob Dowling's birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Rob Dowling. You're a great friend. You're a great man. A great man. A great man. And we hope that you have a magnificent birthday. Happy birthday, bro. Funnily enough, Eddie, it was another important person's birthday yesterday. That just worked quite well in terms of... You know, bringing us full circle here. Evie Rose, official baby of the podcast, number one, uh, turned two yesterday. I have a fucking two-year-old, so that was, that was a lovely day, but a complete fucking wig out. I had many moments of just like existential cry, like going, "What the fuck is life? What is going on here?" Why? Because she's two. Because she's two. Because she's there. Because she's a human. Being a parent is Buzz Lightyear said it best, falling with style. You don't know what you're doing. You're just trying to do it, but you just do it. And you're like, oh, yeah, I think I'm doing it right. But you just sometimes catch yourself going like, what the fuck is going on? I've got a person who's like calling me dad. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't feel like the way I see a response like dad. You know what I mean? I, I feel like a fucking idiot who tells inappropriate stories on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. As you get older, you realise that... You're just falling with style. Yeah, well, that your parents are just people. Yes. Who are also full of shit. Who are, yeah, equally. Equally full of shit. Yeah. Everyone's full of shit. Everyone's full of shit. When you realise that, you're like, ah. Sometimes you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, sometimes I've always looked to you as like, oh, okay. But now what I'm learning is that it's all right for me to just hear your advice, opinion, thoughts and go, not for me the greatest respect to you and everything you've done for me and brought me up, brought me into this world. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Great day though. Speaking of parents, my old man, God love him. Didn't get Evie anything. And then last minute went to get her some shit like, which, you know, like he didn't need to, but he did anyway. And he rocked up like, so, you know, she got pan- like she got pounded into the earth with bluey gear. Because she's just obsessed with Bluey, right? Bluey cake, multiple Bluey toys, a Bluey car, Bluey backpack, Bluey fucking lunch. A Bluey box. car? Like it's when a, you sit in? No, so it's a car like this big and it's got a Bluey driving it. Yes. And some surfboards on the roof and it opens up and it's just got Bluey in it. And she loves it? Frosts it. Frosts everything Bluey. And oh, I'll try, I've got to remember the fucking dude because we also, one of the perks, I don't know if I said it in the podcast before, but I don't know if like, you have. One of the great perks of all time, for me anyway, of doing this podcast was a dude from Bluey reached out (laughs) who listens to the show. Was like, yeah, me and my brother work for Bluey or like in some way work on Bluey. I think the brother, one of them might be a director or something. But basically was like, let us send you a heap of Bluey shit. I'll find his name and I'll fucking shout out. But like, let me send you a bunch of Bluey shit. So we got a bunch, like a nice Bluey book as well. A big Bluey doll. She has like a big bluey doll now, a medium sized bluey doll, a small bluey doll, and then like three little bluey toys. And then a bluey car. And as I said, everything else bluey and had a bluey cake. Which one is her favorite of the, of the sizes? To be honest, she had the small one already. That was what my sister got her before when she was back from overseas. Then she opened the big bluey, which is the one that I got from bluey head office. Yeah. Bluey incorporated. Was it signed by bluey? Uh, no, but I am going to start pushing the narrative that I am friends with Bluey to her. Then the third Bluey was the middle size Bluey from her uncle Wee, my brother Will. Mm. But that Bluey has a light in the belly. So you push it and it's also a night light. So I feel like that one's got unfair advantage maybe, but it's... it's but you can see that becoming I can favorite. see that being the favourite, the bluey with the light in the chest, which I also managed to put myself on the bitch again in front of my mother-in-law and the entire family who are over because I needed to unscrew something in there to get a battery in. Mm. And I got it undone, but it wasn't coming out the screw. So I went away to like get it all ready to go and then I've come, had to come back out to like the living room and be like, the screw's not coming out. And then Marina just goes... Like Marina again going like, oh, handyman. Like she said, she now knows that she just 
fucking absolutely burns me with that line every single time. Then my brother did it and he got it and it was fucking embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, my you dad... fucking hopeless. My dad rocks up with... <laughs> he comes in, he's like, oh, party time. He's dressed like a goofball and he's like, he'd have a good time. And then he's like, all right, Eve, I got you some presents. And it reminded me of sort of like in uh, old school when he's like, I got you a bread maker. It has three speeds. <laughs> It's like a last minute gift thing. Dad's like, all right, come over here. And we're on the table and he's like, look at this. It's an Australian flag towel. And Evie's <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah. And he's like, hold on, that's not all, that's not all. I've got some, uh, you know, the non-permanent Australian flag uh, tattoos. And Evie's like, okay, cool. And he's like, oh, we're not done yet. <laughs> and I've got an Australian flag stubby holder. <laughs> Like, I'm laughing like, what the fuck's this? He's like, can you tell us stuff by the $2 shop on the way here? <laughs> it was all stuff for like Australia Day slash we don't celebrate Australia Day anymore. But, you know, like it was all the fucking Australia Day sales shit and dad's just going, fuck it. What is, what's Evie going to like? Some Australian flag tattoos. Yep, we got an Australian flag towel and a stubby holder for the beer she doesn't drink yet. How was it received? I mean, she's a ba- she doesn't give a shit. Like, she'll she'll play with a plastic bag, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she was, like, probably a little confused. How was your how was your weekend? It was good, mate. Got down to Camden for... Oh, that's right. A mate's sort of, like, engagement party. Mm-hmm. It was like an engagement party. But also, because Tamworth's been moved, Tamworth Music Festival, postponed, I believe, Tom. Yes. They had, like, a mini sort of... They just had some artists there to sort of sing in your That's, home. like, very cool. That's, like, it a very... It was so sick. Yeah. So sick. Like, some of the people that played, I was like, what the fuck? Like, really, really talented like individuals really f- who are down there. Really fucking How talented. did they know these people? Through Max's fiance. Wow. So, they are also in part of the engagement party, but it was just, like, with a live music element. So, it was an engagement party, and they went, fuck it, let's bring these people down as well. Yes. Because you're not... Was it meant to be this weekend or something? Though? I don't know. Probably. Maybe. I thought it was like in April or some shit. It's around now. Right. So maybe it was postponed to April. I'll tell you why. Because I happened to listen to, very randomly, Lee Kernigan in an interview talking about the Tamworth Music Festival. Yeah, I'm on the website here. It's in April. Uh, was it postponed to yeah, April? Yeah, postponed to Okay, right. Yeah. So I must have listened to a post-postponement. You've listened to a post-postponement. That's what's thrown you potentially, yeah. Tom? Yeah. But it was a fucking doozy of a weekend. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I was very, very jealous when I heard about that. Like, I know Max. Max is a good dude. I'm not in the engagement party invite sphere of his friendship circle. But once I heard about, like, everything that was going on, I was like, fuck. Mm. Jarch was also particularly jealous. <laughs> you can imagine. Yeah. But you have to... He yeah. would be very jealous. You have to jest like a cowboy. Well, like, that was sort of the theme. Okay. So I just nipped over to Josh. Josh he's is. away in the country, but, like, I just raided his cupboard. Yeah, Josh, I'm going to need all of the things. That yeah, he's, own. like, in his room. He's got, like, seven cutters hanging on the wall, and then you just go into his fucking closet, and it's just, like, all, like, work shirts and shit. Yeah. I'm just like, you are fucking hilarious. It was all basketball shoes and fucking... But I respect I I respect him allowing me to wear his stuff. Oh me. no, you're right. That's nice because I wonder if there's like some got sort the of Cuban cowboy code. boots and shit in there. You know, is there a cowboy code where, it's where like a you cowboy can't wear doesn't a cowboy's share hat. cowboy stuff? I don't know. I was respectful, and when compliments were provided to me, I was quick to remind them that indeed the cutter wasn't mine. It was it was my friend's. Oh really? Yeah. Is that because it was so hectic where you like, it was you can't, a, well, it was a nice one. And you, I'm like, you can't get around pretending like it's your own. Oh, I just can't do that. I just, I feel too weird yeah. because people inevitably ask you where it's from and shit. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know Yeah. because I don't own it. No, that's fair. Cause that's it, fair. it's sort of like, I think it might've been from Mexico. I don't know. But also like, you're not a cutter, cutter guy. So I'm not a cutter cut- guy. And I think that other cuttermen or women, I think that when you start talking cutters, Tom, I think that... Uh, your lack of knowledge. Your lack of knowledge shines through. Yeah, and I don't want to be caught in a lie at an no. engagement party slash sort of Tamworth Festival no. lying about cutters that I don't own. I just don't need that in my life. You do not need that in your life. I don't need it. And I didn't put myself in that position. So that was that. But it was a fucking hell of a weekend. God, was it, it, was was it large or was it just like nice? 
You know what I mean? Where like you don't have to turn it into some well, uh, candles at both ends sort of operation. I didn't, I didn't candle at both end it. Ella and I got Maccas on the way home, Ubers, stayed at the hotel motel in Camden. Did I want to camp? No. Now. Sue me. Sue me. Sue me for that. Yeah. Sue me for that. Got a bit of Mac uh, Maccas on the way home, quarter pounder, 10 nuggets, what up? Is this on the way back to Sydney or is this is like once you left the festival? Left the festival. I think we left at one o'clock. So it wasn't, it wasn't burnt. It wasn't candle stuff. Drive? Uber. Uber, sorry, gotcha. So it wasn't candle stuff. No, one ain't candles. One ain't candles, but we gave it a nudge, Mm. Tom. If you know what I'm trying to say. Well, I do it, man. I mean, uh, you know, a nudge is a nudge is a nudge. A nudge is a nudge is a nudge. He's a nudge. Mm. He's a nudge. Yeah. But congratulations to those two. Congratulations. Millie, Max, congratulations. A couple of out now. Growing winners. out the long hair as well, which is nice well, to see. Well, he's looking great, Tom. He's he looking, looking He's great. looking fucking sexy. He's all get out. But he always has. He is someone, and I mean, again, this is very inside our own personal lives, and it will mean nothing to most people who don't know Max. Effortlessly, I've always loved the way he dresses. He's kind of like... It doesn't look like he's trying, but there's an aesthetic that he always has, but it looks really good. It's like this old timey, but it's not like, it's not old timey at all. He's not like he's, he could wear what he's wearing in the twenties and you wouldn't think it was weird, but he doesn't look like he's dressing in the twenties. He's just a shirt and some, sh- and like, you know, pants, boots. I don't know how to describe it, dude. Max, if you're listening, I love how you dress. He That's loves how you dress. Say. He loves how you It's dress. always a little rough and, but it's smart. Well, he looked great on the weekend. He I bet bo- he fucking a little did. Bolo time. Of course, he's a bolo you know, guy. A he, can bolo. Pull, he can pull off a bolo. He can pull off a bolo. And it was effortless, the bolo as well. Yeah. Not really everyone was. can. Not everyone can. Not everyone can, Tom. Not everyone can. That's a great point. Like, wear a, bo- wear a bolo at your own... Risk? Risk, peril. Peril, maybe not the right word, but there is inherent risk baked into the wearing of a bolo because the bolo you need to be a you. bolo operator. And yeah. the bolo can wear people, Tom. The bolo has a mind of its own. And My old a man. strong character to wrangle a bolo. My old man's a bolo man. He used to rock bolos all the time. He rocked up in a bow tie to have his birthday. Did he? Well, he wanted to dress up, Tom. I know. And suspenders. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Keep his pants up. Was he wearing a belt with them or just the suspenders? <sighs> I think it was just the suspenders. I think, it was, I think there was utility to the suspenders whilst it was a wild call. Well, I respected I, it. But I respect that, right? I respect that he's always he's, been a quirky dresser. That's for sure. I respect that he's playing into the utility of the suspender mm. as opposed to wearing them for aesthetic reasons. Yeah, he wasn't wearing red food glasses with no lenses. Because you know sometimes I mean? you will see the use of suspenders with a belt, and I'm like, well, you've just cancelled yourself out. This doesn't make sense. No, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Now I'm confused. Yeah. So don't do that. It's like wearing floaties and bubbles on your arms. You've got a floaty. Well, floaties and a life jacket. Yeah. Like, what do you? What's the point here? Do you just want your arms to float? <laughs> don't get it. I don't. Oh, get you it. thought we were going to say something else after that? No, we're no, allowing no, no, your no, mind no, no, to no, think no, about no, that. No, no. We let will. it hang in the air. Yeah, yeah. Let it hang. Let it hang. So Sean White not competing at this Winter Olympics, is he? I don't know. That's coming up sooner than you would think. It's it's in a couple of weeks. I think it's in like the start of Feb. Ah, uh, no, he's competing. Wow. Is he? This guy won't quit. I know, we need him th- to fuck off so Scotty James can win a gold. Well, Scotty James will win gold anyway, bro. Believe. Yeah, I do believe. Do you want to believe or not? I, look, I will, but Scotty James hasn't. He's won every single world championship like that known to man except the Olympics. Yeah, I know, but I need you to start believing. I do believe. Well, it doesn't sound like it. Well, I don't like the flying tomato fucking getting around. I know, but he's old now, bro. Yeah, but you know what? So is Tom Brady, and he's getting pumped in the fucking against the... Which is an omen, yeah. potentially. Potentially. Potentially an omen. Um... So yeah, that was my weekend, Tom. And then yesterday I sat on the couch, I finished cheer, I watched the UFC, which we'll get to. Yes. And I was gluttonous. You finished season two of cheer? Yeah, dude. I've been getting more people reaching out angry. Like a a lot of people were angry that I watched Emily in Paris, which is like fucking, that's their own issue because Mm -hmm. they're not comfortable with themselves to go and watch one of the great shows. Yeah. But equal amounts of like shock that I haven't seen cheer. That you haven't? Yeah. 
Cheer is what you need when you need to turn off. So I need to boot down. So like that, dun, 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 dun. the computer shut down. When you're like, but you're on like sleep mode. Okay. So like a, a, a wake of the mouse will, will <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. Mean? You haven't shut down. I'm not shut Hibernation. down. Hibernation. I mean, yeah, sort of. I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And I might have just had a whole chicken peri peri to myself. Yeah, right. With a can of Coke. And yeah. I'm just like... <laughs> You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just move the mouse if you need me, but otherwise this is on energy saver <laughs> mode. I'm on energy <laughs> saver mode. Know that. And cheer will help you do that. Yeah. Like... Keeps you in a nice little just like level of... Was it homeostasis or something? Like shit, I right? only had to... Like all of season two, I only had to pause it once. Wow, dude. Holy <laughs> fuck. And that was to what? Get the food or hit the B room? Um, as, no, as in like when I got like... Oh, it got too much for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Do you yeah. know what I'm trying to say? Well, look, I know that you have to pause the show, pause shows and they get too uncomfortable, <laughs> which is fucking bizarre still to me. That you've got to like... Well, at least yourself. I'm honest. No, of course you're... Well, we're of course, this is what it's about, but... Is it weird? Sure. Yeah, you've got to like gather yourself before you can continue. It's <laughs> Ella so looks awkward. at me yesterday. She goes, "Not this again." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, no, sorry." We I just said a moment. We need what happened in the moment. Do you remember what it was that made you need to pause it? Yeah, someone fell in the final. <laughs> when it's all on the line, and someone fell, and you just went, "Nah." Well, because they'd, they'd killed their preliminary the day before, Tom, but that's only worth 25%. Then the final day comes, 75% on the line, someone falls, and it's someone that you like as well. Someone that like, shouldn't fall? Well, not that shouldn't, but someone you don't want to. Right. Because it line. basically, look, I'm not going to get into it. I don't want to give out spoilers, but it was a big fall. Okay, big fall. Big fall. With huge consequences, I'll say that. <laughs> I'll say that. Do you know what move they were going for? Uh, I think it was part of the pyramid. I think. Okay, right. But like I someone should... that knows what they're the, – the, like a, a cheerer might say, nah, bro, that wasn't a, that right. wasn't a pyramid. But I, I mean, don't know. Well, um, it was my, aerial stuff. You're my go-to for cheer, so like – It wasn't tumbling. Okay, it wasn't tumbling. That I, we do know. That, that I'm confident of. Okay. Wasn't tumbling. Might have been a pyramid. Might have been a pyramid. Which is a big fucking deal in the in the. But I did get to the part about Jerry. Can confirm Jerry a sick puppy. Right. Okay. So like Jerry looking at fifteen years. Oh shit! How old is Jerry? Twenty twenty one something like that. Twenty two. Right, and he was like grooming. Yeah, um, we're not going to get into it. But okay. Jerry. Well, I mean, you just started getting into it. No, but I mean, like, I'm not gonna. Well, I'm no. just saying Jerry's a sicko. Okay, Jerry's a sicko looking at 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally at 15 and also 15 years? Both. Okay, both. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Jerry. 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 Fucking Jerry. Oh, that's gross. All that right. is gross. Now, Tom, sport? I think that's probably important. You know what? I, there's one thing we have to get to, which is sports related, so, you know. Um, but I saw it doing the, well, like I was already aware of what was going on, but the blowback was being felt around the community. Um, Thick Ropes County 11. Yes. Yes. Now they played yesterday. Yes, they did. We played yesterday. I shouldn't be, you know, but I didn't play yesterday. Um, they played against the team. They played against the, they played against the side. The 12th man, funnily enough, is what they were called. Really? Yeah, with like my old boy's logo. Anyway, they were, we bowled quite well, had them all out at, uh, or yeah, all out at one for 128 in the 19th over. Is that good? It's not bad, it's chaseable. It's definitely chaseable 128, even though you're a bunch of losers like us. Um, we were all out for 32. <laughs> Chasing 128. 
someone got a hat trick and it's up on like the last man stand. I Instagram saw it. Well, it's on punters and dribblers. Yeah, now right. Well. I might share that on the Hello Sport, but yeah, hat trick. Um, Dude, you have to put it on the Instagram. Yeah, it's well, fucking hilarious. Hat trick. Some of the worst batting I've ever seen. Well, in the I was about to say that. Some of the techniques there, not bro. Like stepping back to, like it was just this slow dodly spin. No disrespect to whoever it was, and. Just like, firstly, if you're the first person to get out, it's almost like, okay, I don't know how you were batting before then and maybe you made a mistake. If you're the next guy to get out, you're like, okay, like you first ball, you know, you got a, you got a good one. If you're the third guy and you're like going, you're trying to hit runs like on the hat trick ball, just get forward to it. Who was the... I think it was Barthy. Shout out Barthy. I love Barthy. Runner. Runner Barth. Great man. <laughs> Runner Barth. One of the great men. But let's go through the... Well, yeah, we'll go through the fucking scorecard here. Big slick chick. 15 runs off 10 balls. Street fighter street. Was, three was runs. Was chicken not out? Was he the only surviving? Uh, no. Ch Bro, chicken carried his bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Streety, uh, three from six. He carried his bat and he faced 10 balls. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry bowled three from eight. 20 wells. One run from three balls. Also bowled. Uh, Alex, he was 10 from eight. There we go. Caught. Caught. Marty Jenkins bowled. Barthy bowled. Dark. Barthy, dark. Frogman. <laughs> bowled. No, he couldn't have been bowled. He didn't face a ball. Well, how does that work? Don't very, know. Very confusing. Very confusing. Anyway. So, what are you in the lowest division? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. And you haven't won a game this year? No, we have. Mm -hmm. We won a game. We won the game I played. I think we played, I think we won two games. But this is probably close to our worst ever loss. It's a pretty bad one. Lost by 96 runs. Apparently as well, we had, because there's some new guys in How the side. How many overs did they face? Seven. We, were, we faced seven overs? Yep. Yep. Not great. Not great. But these guys are like, fucking hope you're dressing it on Hello Sport. I'm like, yeah, bro. You want me to hear, hear, me, hear me address it? Me and my brother didn't play. <laughs> That's what we were saying at home. We were like, Thank Christ we didn't get pounded. Me and Will didn't get pounded by the team <laughs> called 12th man. Think, bro, are we mid-table? Seven games, two wins, five losses. There's someone... Mate, we are better than our place on the table. Don't worry about that. It's just hard to, you know, like, we're all... We got a, we, we brought in some new... Uh, we've made some new signings as well uh, the last couple of weeks. So, you know, it's about just trying to build a bit of team cohesion and shit. But that was a, that was a, that was a big old pumping from the thick ropes. And that guy got a hat trick, which I will put on the Instagram. But it had nothing to do with me. So other than the fact that it's a team, my team. Your team? Yeah. Uh, the Slippery Bucks got pumped last week as well. Okay, good. So it's not- it Top of the table we were playing. Division one, just out of our depth. See, yeah, look, we were playing second on, second to the top, you know? Yeah. In division 10. Something like that. But I mean, like, you know what I'm saying. Though. Yeah, I know what you're saying. And what, what was pumping for you? Like, what was the score? I think it was like 12-4. Shit. Yeah. There was a lot of tired bucks out there. And were you playing a, some young, virile gentleman? Well, one of the blokes in the team was 65. But was he still nippy? He was still nippy. Yeah, dude. right. They were like, they were a relatively young team. But is that like those, you see those like, uh, you see the like- 65? Yeah, but like bro. you see those outliers where it's like some- kid's dad and you're like oh this guy's still like a motherfucker he was pretty good i think yeah. he scored a try he was very impressive you see those ones that are still holding on to it at 60 where you're like oh that 60 year old could kick the shit out of me if he wanted to oh yeah he was a fucking he presence. can run rings around 100 percent, 100 percent. i did score a try but that was about it you know what it's like score as they say it's like scoring a ton in the losing side or a 50 in the losing side something like that moves, you know yeah but that's okay we regroup dust ourselves off go again this week that's what it's about Learning from your mistakes, going back to the drawing board. Learning how to be better, learning how to be bolder, learning how to be braver. Yeah, I'm hoping I can fucking play. I haven't played for the thick ropes. I've played once all year. Dad life. Um, dad life. Dad life. Let's talk a little sport, eh? 
Let's do it. Is there any more of like a circle jerk echo chamber than LinkedIn? Oh my God, how bad is it? Like it's a fucking... Oh, I spend no time. There. No time. I made one when I was gainfully unemployed, which was a stress because I was like, I've got nothing to put in here. What have you got on there now? I tried to delete everything off there. I couldn't. I tried to delete my LinkedIn. I didn't know how. So I like. I might have like. It might be the weirdest LinkedIn in the world. I think I've got my title as head honcho at, at Hello Sport. <laughs> <laughs> like we always told you. Yeah, like we always said. Like if we were to actually get titles, I call it as head honcho. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, <laughs> but I don't know. Did you ever put that in your um, email signature? No, I don't know how to fucking. Like I'm sure if I sat there and fart around, I can change my email signature. But it was just like, like the shameless cringe self promotion. That like yeah, yeah. and like I, I don't understand what it's used for. That's the thing though, because it's, it's like, like Instagram for corporate people. Because you don't what really do you do get. Are there? we recording? Yeah, yeah. yeah like recording. we don't really get. You don't get. I'm sure you get jobs off it. I don't know, but like most of it isn't getting jobs. It's telling people what you've done at work. Don't you reckon? Yeah. Or like congratulate this dude on his new position here. On my new role is fucking, you know, this this yeah. thing and fucking, or six years at this or like. Or someone will post like a really heartfelt long thing about how much a company means to them dude, after their Yeah, no, but or like, or like some op-ed that they've written <laughs> themselves about the state of the fucking financial industry. Or like some really earnest and sincere thing about like, you know, hair care products and you're like what like sure but who's this for that's what i don't re fully understand like okay you can you can write a piece on interest rates and why they've gone up or gone down or stayed the same whatever i get that and how your company is best placed yes. to capitalize on but who's reading that going yes he's our man three likes whoa yeah <laughs> great all from the same business like all just people fucking you know what I'm so like surely that shit's it's more I find that so transparent. I'm like, you're mm. just trying to pump up yourself, your business, which is fine. But like, that isn't selling me. No, but all, it's so transparent. Also, all the connections, shit. Like, I was when I. Well, like, you know, this guy can use Microsoft Word. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> fucking. I'm gonna go and hire him. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go endorse him. Is that what you do? Oh yeah, right. So, you, but I thought you would. Yeah, I thought you could endorse people. It was more like, oh, I've worked with Eddie before. He's a good worker. I think there's like skills and stuff that you can. That was like, also the thing for me, where like you're putting your skills in there. It's like, I don't have any skills really. Like I can sort of you know edit some, but like I'm not. I'm not skilled. When I was doing my thing, though, what would yours have been? It was for like I was PowerPoint, trying PowerPoint. Yeah, well, like I was trying to get jobs for Word. like podcasting radio fucking but then it's like what else and then you just see these generic names of jobs where it's like digital marketing manager or like fucking social and you're like what the fuck am I, what does that mean like what am i just like running the instagram accounts for these fucking anyway i never got offered a job anyway but i was just sometimes i get these notifications and i'm like like in my email oh you know someone's tried to make a connection da, 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 and i'm like who the fuck is this like some random person but then like you get one i got one the other week that was like from a dude i went to primary school with mm. like what the fuck are you adding me on linkedin for because he wants to he wants to connect professionally <laughs> <laughs> i know it's just a bizarre one because i mean i guess like you know facebook and instagram like maybe you can't find me facebook you'd be able to but like yeah. I, I don't know i'm just like linkedin well, Either way, I, don't, I, didn't, I, don't know I if accidentally said it. I don't know if he's actively looked for you. Maybe it was came up I could with just like recommended up. connections. Or yeah, that's true. But it would be funny to try and find the wankiest title on LinkedIn. Can you start sending us in the wankiest titles you've seen on LinkedIn, please? Mine is, and Eddie, yours will be changing too as soon as you leave here, head honcho. <laughs> at Hello Sport. At Hello Sport. But you know, like deputy vice president yeah, of, of fucking international communications or some shit. That's also, yeah, the, the, like the six pronged, the six pronged title, which has like all these caveats in it. It's like- What's you know, a deputy vice president? A what does that even mean? Deputy vice president of East Asian something. Of, you know, of like, APAC. Yeah. And subsidiaries. 
and they all sound really impressive, but like, of course they do. That's but the vice point. president is yeah. actually a shit kicker at like a big company. Imagine but what a deputy it, vice yeah. president is then. If you think <laughs> vice president's shit, you're a deputy vice president. Like, how can you have a deputy vice? <laughs> why? Why not? Basically, what that's saying is, is you you haven't made the starting side and you aren't on the bench. If you're the deputy, if you're the deputy vice, like, well, you're the deputy to the vice. Yeah, so you're probably not even fucking playing. You're third string, fourth, because I imagine there's I a deputy the president, president has his own deputy. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. deputy president and vice president. Can you be the deputy, deputy to a deputy? A double deputy. A double deputy. <laughs> I mean, I think you can because. They make up shit in the corporate world. Like that's they what make I'm up saying. roles. That's it's just what I'm like saying. that's what's so funny to see as well. well in they my do it in um. They do it in that movie with Leo, The Wolf of Wall Street, when they just come up with these like I'm vice president and shit because it sounds impressive. Exactly. Yeah, you just say it. But like I would see it all the time in my former industry where there was like you know one content manager for this region then one for this region and then it was like then we have the head content manager for all the regions and it was like oh no nah, now we're fucking scrapping all of them and now we've got one digital local global fucking content <laughs> you're like what the fuck is going on just like this it just doesn't make any sense sometimes the local rep looking after global interests it's, <laughs> it's uh yeah love that but no nah, now he's just solely digital social local global content yeah you know, okay of sales, right. <laughs> um, anyway, shout out to LinkedIn and shout out to, I won't say his name, but the guy from primary school who started following me, who was, I didn't see that one coming. Let me say that. Didn't see it coming? No. How long do you think you'd been planning that? Or do I, you think it was a spur of the moment? Well, thing? since you pointed out or reminded me that you can just sort of flop up in people's LinkedIn feeds. Did he seem like a real LinkedIn operator? Like, did he have the full kind of... To be honest, on dude, not really. He was like... He was a bit of a bully at school, like, where... He was the sort of kid who hit puberty, like, first. Yeah. So he was fucking humongous and used to throw his weight around. But he was also... And this is going to sound a little bit gross. If you got kids in the car, turn them off. Turn it off. Now. Just giving him a second for the kids to get out of the room. He used to jack off in public all the time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm. I did not expect that. Mm. You know, I just, I, you know what made me think of it when I went, yeah, I didn't see, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I didn't see him follow, like. He, he was said, a public masturbator. It was like following LinkedIn. I was like, I didn't see that coming. And then I was like, oh, actually, I saw him coming heaps, unfortunately, because <laughs> oh, he used to do God. it all the time. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. We were like 12. Are you serious? Yeah. He. This is so fucking gross. This is very crass, Tom. We were on a school bus on a way to a sports trip once and he was fucking pounding away on himself <laughs> while oh like, I'm, a God. I'm across the aisle. Again, I hope the kids aren't around for this. I'm across the aisle from him and I'm like, can see it out of the corner of my eye. And I'm like, this is so fucking inappropriate. <laughs> like, I don't need to do this. I've got a job to, I've got to go play cricket today. The under twelve. You got a job to do. I got a job to do. I got to get my mind on the game, and I can't because name redacted is fucking pulling himself to death on the seat next to me. And then when he was and what's and it was at this point in your life, his life was he still the big bad bully? Like, yes. is anyone can anyone feasibly no, go? I no. think it's time to put that thing away. Right. <laughs> no, no, especially not while he's in the fucking like. What year are you in? Year five? Year six, I think. Year five or six? I think it was year six. And he was on full autopilot, just fucking, you couldn't talk to him, you couldn't reason with him, nor would you want to when he's in that state because you got to fucking, you got to eyeball his, his shaft. Anyway, as he reaches fucking completion. Oh my God. <laughs> this is. This, this isn't is, where we thought we were going on a Monday, and no I apologize. Way. I this apologize. Is wild stuff. He whips down the blazer of the kid on the seat. Oh front. my <laughs> God. Are you serious? <laughs> A hundred percent serious. I'm not lying. This is one hundred percent a fact. This cool happened. Story. This happened. This happened. And the guy in front was fucking ropeable. But again, bully. What can you do? Most of us didn't even weren't at that stage of maturity. No, I can generally, imagine. Generally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah we yeah. weren't able to Could do. The, off. We weren't able to do the things that he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't think the story goes much further than that. But that was probably the most famous public uh 
But that's what's crazy to me, right? Like if you're doing shit like that in primary school and you start adding people on LinkedIn, like, I mean, time heals all wounds, sure. But like, I wouldn't want to talk to the people I was doing that in front of ever again. Well, <laughs> it doesn't heal all wounds. <laughs> Certainly, I wouldn't be touching that blazer. I wouldn't be touching that blazer. That blazer needed to be thrown out. Yeah. yeah. Times don't heal in the blazer. <laughs> and it's not healing that memory either. No. I, that thing's been seared into my brain, unfortunately. I forgot that is, many that things That is truly life. shocking. I wonder how often he thinks about that or if he does think about that. You know what I mean? Yep, I do know what you mean. He clearly doesn't if he's prepared to add you. Well, that I'd was be my like, thought. I need to be... That was my thought. I need to be as far away from... These people as possible. Yes. I need to rebrand myself. I maybe need to go down to Depot, which I know is not... what is. I don't think that's an Australian thing. No, it's change not. change my name. But yeah, basically, I just need to skip town. Maybe go to like a town... What's it like? Cuba Pedi, where they basically mm. just live underground. And mine opals and shit. Yeah, Cuba so Pedi, yeah. I think maybe that's where you best spend South your time. South Australia, I believe. I believe you might be right. Um, but that's just something to think about. That's LinkedIn though. Yeah, that's LinkedIn. That is LinkedIn. Did you get a job off LinkedIn? When you, like, when you were doing no, it up? Dude, when you no. were in between jobs and you were doing it up? No, I didn't get anything. Were I, didn't, you like, I didn't even get a fucking inquiry. But were you thinking to yourself, this? No, this is my this ticket. This could be my ticket. No, I was very much uh, uninspired by it, but I was like, it seems like this is a necessary thing to have where it's like, they can come and look at my what fucking- What photo did you use? Mate, I cropped a photo from like, I don't know, just a photo. I didn't have any, like, I didn't get like a fucking professional photo. I just went to my Facebook ones and went, okay, this one is the least bad. I'm not a big photo guy in general. As you know, when you try and Photoshop shit for our fucking, you know, episode tiles. But so I just found one from like, I was, it's honestly from like a night out where I'm just, I just happened to look all right. And I'm like, all right, I'll just use it. You got sunnies on? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I don't have Sonny's on. But I didn't get any job. I ended up just getting a job through a mate, which is how fucking... That's how it really happens. Yeah, that's right. That's how it really happens. I got fucking... I got fucked around by a podcast company. Um, not that I deserved the job, but just more like, yeah, yeah, sure, we'll talk. Yeah, And it was like, just they just strung me along for ages and I was like, fuck this. Yeah, like ne digital networking, is that really networking? As opposed to like the old fashioned way which of doing like it, which is going them, to the pub? Which I think is a far better way to like get a grasp of someone's, like whether they're a fit or not. I've got a couple of beat like mates that do that and they, they do it the old school way. They go out and get on the piss. So like if they're looking at hiring someone? No, like doing business with people. Oh, like network, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like their clients and stuff. I feel like They'll that's how They'll take them out for lunches, dinners, I feel whatever. like that's how it's done at the higher end. But that's my point, yeah. right? They're not going, G'day, we're friends on LinkedIn, and I'm going to endorse you, and now you're going to give me business. Like You're a third, you're a third degree connection. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, shout out to LinkedIn. If, if you're a LinkedIn guy and you're, oh my God. That back scrub rad was a lot. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, if you're a LinkedIn guy or girl, there's nothing wrong with that, but it we're is... Just, we, Tom and I, just failing to see the benefits, the real tangible And benefits. as I was... So when I was doing the sanitizer game, of which you all know, and if you don't know, well, now you do, I was heavy in the sanitizer and mask business during COVID 2020. I was on LinkedIn all the time, but- Heavy that, not because of his success, because of his involvement. You know what? You could argue it was successful because it kept me afloat for an entire year and a few other people who you've heard us mention on this podcast, Judge, um, <laughs> kept us alive and kicking. And, you know, did, did we get a lot of valuable skills out of it and make some good friends? Yes, we did. Did we sell much personally? Me? Very little. Some other people, though, sold a lot, which was why I was able to be employed for so long. Um, <laughs> I used to use LinkedIn then because you were trying to basically pound fucking businesses into the earth with like, hey, do you need masks? Hey, do you need sanny? So you just like, whatever the business was, it was like, you know, the food distribution businesses and supply chain businesses and shit like that. And there was some other plat, there was some other tool that you could use where if you, it would basically give you the email of everyone you fucking, it would give people like people's like strip the emails 
Do you mean? Yeah. So you get their personal work email, mobile number, anything that was like behind the like the wall, the LinkedIn wall, you just bang, get it. So I was fucking, I hit up the CEO of a fucking Fortune 500 company in the emails. Uh, what was the company called? Shine, Henry Shine Dentistry or some shit. They're like a six billion dollar a year company or something. I just went fuck it. We're trying to get, we were trying to hit U.S. companies like one of our sort of you know new directions. We're trying to hit U.S. companies, so I was like fuck it. So I just went to the Fortune 500 and just put it like <laughs> got all the emails and numbers of all like the big dicks in the world. And not really expecting much, but like you'd get the big dicks and you'd get everyone below them, all the ball, pubes and balls that sit below the big dicks and you'd just pound them all with the same email. But then the CEO of Henry Shine got back to me and was like, hey, mate, great, really appreciate you reaching out. Like, um, let's set up a meeting with you and our head fucking global purchase of whatever the hell. And I was like, okay, right. And then like super pumped, fucking holy shit, we got a meeting with these guys. I had to get up real early to like have a 6 a.m. meeting with these dudes in New York. And I'm like fucking shitting myself. But also I've got the other guys on the call because I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know. Really, like I've never really sold much. I couldn't sell to a fucking high school where this guy was like trying to nickel and dime me and I fucked the deal. It was for like 10 grand. <laughs> this is for like a billion dollar company. We get through the whole thing, have a really great meeting with him. The guys were really nice, had a laugh. They're like, oh, we love what you're doing. Like, you know, the initiative, you're a small business trying to do this. We were like, holy shit. And then we're like, they're like, we need X amount of masks. And we're like, yeah, we can do that. What were they? KN, KN95s? Like, yeah, we can do that. And they're like, great, perfect. Well, let's just, we'll finish this up here. We'll get you in touch with our, the next guy down the line and we'll, we'll sort it out and we'll get it going. And like, we get off that call and the numbers they were talking about was like ridiculous. And I'm like, oh, my god i am the greatest fucking salesman of all time we just got like a bajillion masks then we're like pumped you know i'm walking to the office swinging my dick yeah, after that yeah, morning meeting it. you're high on life high right? in life wearing thinking a, about the numbers you're wearing a jacket com. you know what i mean i'm like i've rolled in like i'm fucking yeah, you put your leather one I'll on. put my you know i'll put my leather jacket on roll into the office anyway then the next day they get another email back from their like next purchasing guy and it's like so this n95s kn95s Yep, so we're just looking at X amount. I can't remember. It was in the shitloads, though. Just a shitload of N95 masks, please. And we're like, no, we were, we were talking KN95s with your, with your man before. And he's like, well, no, we don't take KN95s here in the US. And I'm like, well, he said you did. <laughs> <laughs> he, he fucking said you did. No, no, he's got it wrong. He's got it wrong. It's the N95s. They're the only ones that are allowed in America. So this deal's over. And I'm like, well, you couldn't get the nine fives. No, dude, they were rare as hen's teeth. But also in Australia, K nine fives are the thing, so we could get fuckloads of those. It was such a minute detail as well, in the to the point now where like I don't think it matters in any country. I think it's just everything goes. But at that time, it was just dumb. Like the N nine fives were FDA certified, K nine fives were TGA certified. It was just like, but they're essentially the exact same thing. And anyway, it robbed me of many, many, many dollars. And th that broke me. <laughs> <laughs> that broke me as a salesman. Did you take the leather jacket off? Jack, it, look, it wasn't a leather jacket for him, but it was like an, it was a trench coat, which I really only pull out for winter. <laughs> but, you know, the sale came in. And I, took the, I took the jacket off and just sort of walked you had out. To. Yeah, well, you had to take the jacket yeah. off at that point. You're not a salesman. No, I was a salesman. <laughs> no, you're not. I was a salesman. For like 24 hours. Well, I mean, the, the sort of numbers that you're hinting at, that's, that's trench coat territory. That's trench coat numbers? Yeah, yeah. You can put your trench coat on and yeah. let the people know, hey. Big day on the sales. You might have a deputy vice president on your hands <laughs> of sales, okay? So, <laughs> fucking. For the Oce Oceana. For the Oceana APAC region. <laughs> and and I do dabble in North America, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Look at these buttons. <laughs> but... I'm going to take it off now and I'm going to walk home. No, no, I'm, I'm going to take and it I'm off. I'm going to tell yeah. the wife what's happened. Yeah, I'm going to because put... Because best believe last night we were already spending that money. We were spending that money. No, no I put the trench into just a plastic Aldi bag that I have <laughs> under the desk and I'm walking home with it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I caught an Uber in, I'm walking home. <laughs> In fact, I might even complain about the Uber, try to get some money back. Yeah, 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 no, I will actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I cancelled it Wrong mid route, wrong route. <laughs> yeah, 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 late to show up, late to get there. Uh, We're going to need that 15 bucks back. Yeah, or at least whatever the booking fee is. <laughs>
Oh. Yeah, so fuck LinkedIn, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, shout out to Henry Shine and the CEO. Was his name Henry Shine? No, I don't think so, because I think Henry Shine is like old. Bro, I did like research on Henry Shine so I could like have some company knowledge before the meeting. Like he was going to test me on the fucking, <laughs> when did the business start? Oh, 1942, uh, out of necessity. Henry Shine, a young Jewish man in America. Oh, fucking Brooklyn. Like, I just fucking. It was 1932, actually. There you go. Yeah. Thank Look, you, if Dave. you don't know this, the yeah. origin story, then. If you don't know when Henry Shine started, then get off the call. <laughs> Did you did you make notes on that? Yeah. <laughs> so did my, you have notes? Not, not about points, the, not, not, I, I was making notes while we were on the call and like a couple of the other guys who were like higher up in the business were like doing most of the talking and all I remember looking at my notes afterwards, they were talking about their market cap was six billion bucks and all I'd written was six, a huge six billion. <laughs> that was all I had. This fucking huge writing. It's like just underlined like, holy fuck. <laughs> six billion. And then, yeah, then everything else happened and the trench coat has not been worn since. <laughs> Any UFC 27 something, maybe 275, 265, 27 something. 270, maybe. 270, might have been 270. Yep. Uh, yesterday, France and Gano, Cyril Garn and Moreno and Figueredo were the co main event. Um, I didn't watch the rest of the card because I was try I was planning on not watching anything until after birthday celebrations. So I just had it paused in the office and then mm. nephew Antonio who does jujitsu was like watching it on his phone and I'm like bro I can hear the commentary eventually Steph then just was like fucking just go watch it so we went in and just watched uh Francis and Cyril um how'd you find it do you have thoughts I do have thoughts it was an interesting fight Gun started very well bro yes he did could argue on the first two rounds. Oh, I think he did. I think it was definitely 2-0 and going into the And zone. then Big Francis just goes, you know what, bruh? I'm going to start fucking body slamming you all over this fucking octagon, dude. You know, that and he started down. picking him up and fucking pounding him into the earth. I'm yeah. like, holy shit. That first takedown was so fucking nasty when he caught his kick. And he just, caught and just like, and just like picks him up in like one motion. I'm like, God save us you're strong yeah, ridiculously strong like you compare his legs to cyril's and you're like they looked four times bigger but the thing is that cyril is huge as well <coughs> and and then it was like francis who everyone is expecting just to either fucking ko cyril in the first two rounds or he's gonna lose in a decision basically or cyril might you know wear him out but like he just it was like he didn't even really land any crazy punches no, he didn't really land anything. He didn't really land anything. It was like, okay, I'm just going to have to show that I can grapple my dick off here, that I'm actually better than everyone thought I was. No one thought that I was capable of this. And it was just like, I am so unbelievably strong. Like just how easy he sort of did it when they were on the ground. Bro. Even when Cyril had some like a top position and Too he'd just strong. be able to get out of Too it straight strong. away. Too strong. Like he had him in the, he like had his leg and shit at one stage. Yeah. He's like, nah, bro. So Antonio, nephew, watching it with me, does jujitsu. He's not a black belt by any means, but he's good. Like he goes in some tournaments and he shit. He knows it. He knows it. Like he, and he was saying things as it was happening and like That'd be nice what, having like a jujitsu guy to watch it It actually was fucking, it was really nice. It was really nice. But at one point he just started pissing himself laughing. And he was like, holy fuck. He was saying that, I can't remember the exact thing, but I think it was something like where um, Cyril was trying to get Francis' arm in a Kimura or something, basically where he's like bending his arm back like that. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, usually the only way you can get out of something like that is to change position. Like you need to move your body to get alt, like orientate yourself so that your arm's in a better position. Mm. And he's like, but Francis was just so fucking strong he just went <laughs> and just like pushed out he was like holy shit he just he didn't even move his body he just fucking like he's just strong he's just so strong he's just so strong i was like good lord so that was interesting though because there was like cyril was favorite most people didn't think for like didn't not didn't give france a chance because he's always a chance because he can just knock you dead 
Well, but I think everyone's thought he was a one-trick pony, yes. which is that I'll just fucking take your head off. Yes. And that's it. Yeah. And in the first couple of rounds... Because he... If you get out of the first couple of rounds, the big fella does tire. And, like, he telegraphs a lot more when he's going for those the big wind-up. Yes. Which is probably why he was like... Everyone thought that Cyril could win by decision. But when he's down two rounds to, to zero, you're like, ooh... Not looking good for you, bro. Not looking good at and all. And then he just starts taking him down and laying all over him and just sapping him of all energy. Like when you when you when he's two down, you're thinking, and like if he's two down, you and someone's go, oh yeah, Francis will go on to win this fight. You think, oh okay, well he's got three rounds to knock him out. Yeah. And then to go on and do it by decision was fucking crazy. But what's interesting about Francis now is that was his last fight on his UFC contract. So usually the UFC will re-sign fighters before their contract expires, especially champions. Um, but he was he's 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 angry at the UFC about the amount of money they pay him and about the fuck arounds that he has when he's trying to get fights and stuff. So and how they fucking gave Cyril the interim belt. Gave shit. Cyril the interim and how they said they the jo- they promised him the John Jones fight and then it didn't happen. And but like, is that because John Jones has got his own fucking issues? Potentially, potentially. I don't As know. As opposed but to like them saying it's, no. It's part of. It's one element to I guess a bigger, part, like issue that he's having. But, like, Dana didn't put the belt on him after the fight. Didn't do a press conference afterwards. Like, the UFC is, like, fucking... They're at loggerheads with Francis. But the idea of fucking letting him go, the, the baddest man on the planet... They're going to let him go, potentially. I uh, don't is know. That, is that where it's at? I don't know. It's, it could happen, yeah. But he wants to, like... He wants to get paid. He's, like... He gets paid, I think, like, 600 grand a fight. He's, like, bro, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Like... I'm not fighting for 600 grand. I've also only got a short window of time. And it's not much, is it? It's not much, man. I, like, wonder, I wonder what sort of pay-per-view numbers he does. Like how... It doesn't matter anymore. So as you know, like the fighters used to be paid, a large part of how fighters are paid was based on their pay-per-view buys. But the UFC doesn't even need to worry about that anymore because ESPN has bought that. So, so uh, like the UFC has the money. Like they've been paid amount of money and they just need to deliver X amount of shows a year. But surely the amount of people that buy the pay-per-view changes. Oh no, it does. It definitely cha- it, it changes it. And but fighters possibly still get a, a share of it. They'd have to get some but share. But it only matters for ESPN. It doesn't matter for you the UFC, who are the people that pay the fighters. Like it doesn't matter what the pay-per-views do. Obviously you want them to do well, but So that negotiation sits outside of so they were paid like a flat rate regardless of what the pay-per-view numbers to are. To my understanding, yes. What, even for people like Conor McGregor and shit? Mm, yeah. Really? Mm. But that doesn't mean that Conor McGregor doesn't get percentage of pay-per-view. He might. Or maybe now they don't give pay percentage. He they definitely just give would. You a flat he rate. definitely would. But maybe they don't. And look, maybe they do. I don't 100% know. But they could also just go, listen, we'll give you $50 Because he, the first time he came, after the, I remember after that deal started, he bought like some crazy amount of subscribers on. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, to ESPN. It's like yeah. a million or two million or some yeah. shit. Yeah. Maybe it was a million. It was a lot. Um, but so, Francis now, not a UFC athlete. Well, he's. Can you just check, Dave? Just check, look, Google something like the championship clause in the UFC, because there might be something to do with the fact that he might, because he's a champion, have to you know, stick around for a year or something before he's out of contract, even after he's fought his last fight, or like a non-compete or something. But he wants to fight Tyson Fury. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's not as ridiculous in this Jake Paul era that we live in. Tyson Fury's spoken about it as well. Yeah, look, I'm not not saying that you couldn't make money. I'm not going to sit here and say that, obviously. But Tyson Fury is a supreme boxer. Oh, dude. 100% 100% he is. Like, it's, that isn't that isn't a Jake Paul Woodley situation. No, no, no. It's, you know what it, I mean? But it is in the sense that it's a sideshow well, shit. Well, it's, like it's like a Conor McGregor Mayweather. Yes, yeah. And Francis was like... people still try to fucking go, well, Conor was close. It's like, no. Well, no, but he still did be- way better than you would think he should against like the greatest... Yeah, in the first round time. when he didn't throw a punch. But that's by the by. First four rounds, I'd say. He was all right. Mate, he still fought. You fought fighting the greatest fighter of all time and it's your first professional boxing yeah, match. Yeah. You can't not respect it. But now, look, if he wants to make money, yeah, shit, I'll buy But that. also Francis's thing is, and again, not to say that Francis 
has a shot against Fury, even though you've always got a puncher's chance. But he was like, boxing is my first sport, not, not MMA. I've fallen into MMA. I'm a boxer first. Or at least, like, you know, that's the way he sort of thinks in, like, it's not maybe as big a leap. But again, it's all still fucking crazy if you're fighting Tyson Fury. But it's also a thing where you're going, like, is Tyson Fury going to do that? It's a, it'd make a shitload of money, though. It'd make a shitload of money. There was also talk about potentially having a boxing match with UFC gloves. That's some sideshow shit. That's some sideshow sh- Yeah, I yeah. can't see them doing that, but that's really sideshow. That's sideshow. That's really sideshow. Holy shit. Mm. You know what, though? Dana does run a fucking tight ship, and he's, if he's not happy, he'll just go, fuck off then. It's got nothing to do with Dana, though. The sideshow. No, no, no. I'm talking about the contract stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, he won't get fucked. He won't get pushed around. But the thing is... He can't, like, it's a bad, well, who the hell am I? Do you reckon? How do you let the baddest man, like the biggest fucking, the, the, the heavyweight champion go? And he's going to go to another organisation and he's going to beat these losers into exactly. the ground in another organisation. Like, but maybe he's like, without the UFC, you're nothing. And will people stop watching, potentially? If he went to Bellator and was fighting, people would watch. But again, that's, I don't know how much of a draw he is. Like, and that's no disrespect to him how much of a draw is he is he bigger than adesanya is he bigger than fucking i reckon he would be bigger than adesanya i see i don't know i'm just i'm speculating here you would assume so because he's so big and thick and powerful and scary as fuck i think because his mo is knocking people dead people love to see that yeah of course they do which is why people were so salty yesterday when they didn't see a knockout they're like that was so shit that's was it yeah it was actually was it that shit i didn't think it was that shit that's the thing with that. I was watching it with... Um, He's done, like, and garno has been... Who did he fight a couple of years ago? That was the worst fight I've ever Derek seen. Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis. That yeah. was fucking appalling. But, like, this was okay. Well, that's what I was trying to say. So I was watching it with um, nephew, brother-in-law, my dad and my brother. And dad, brother uh, were like, this is shit. You know, this is just fucking... They're on the ground grabbing each other and there's barely any punches and all that. And I was like, I fully understand where you're coming from. Like, I get it. I was like, this probably sounds patronizing, but it was like, if you watched more, you would realize that it's actually kind of impressive what Francis is doing because we've no one expected him to be able to do this. Yes. Even though and it he did it over and over and over again. And like the fact that, you know, he basically was only seen as this KO monster. And if he doesn't have that, what does he have? And it's like, oh, he actually That's can. an interesting narrative. Yes. Yeah, like obviously I enjoy people fucking going toe to toe and just throwing themselves into a stupor. Like I obviously I enjoy that. Yes, of course. But you can't tell me that that wasn't impressive. Yes. When he's down two rounds to, to nil and he fucking has to change the script and starts doing shit no one thought he could no do. No one thought That's, he could do. I That's, found that entertaining. Yes, and also like when it comes to heavyweights, there is like, you're because dad's like, fuck, I'm glad I didn't pay for this. And I'm like, yeah, I also, though, am paying for, like, the sort of state of anxiety that I'm placed into watching these fights where it's like knowing anything could happen. Now, something, nothing may happen, right? Like, no big KO happened yesterday. But that doesn't mean I wasn't fucking anxious about the possibility of it happening, the whole fight being like, at any moment, mm. lights can be switched off. They can. They can. Now, on the big boys, on the big six. Mm. Bam Bam, two of us is fighting Derek Lewis I on know. the Adesanya Whitaker card. Oh, is it? Yeah. Hectic. It's like the co main. Hectic. Which is like Feb 18, Feb 12, something like Feb, that. Feb Dude. 12. So that'll be Feb Bam 13. Bam Bam's yeah. starting to get some fucking bigger. F- like, that's a big fight for him. It's a huge fight. I am Team Bam Bam, but that's a big fucking. It's huge for Derek him. Derek Lewis is no fucking joke bam bam i don't i think he might just be in the top 10 now Derek lewis might be third or fourth ranked heavyweight well they're like what's he won four four on the trot yeah. five on the trot and no disrespect to bam bam but the people he's been fighting have not been Derek lewis he would say that himself i would imagine um but if you're gonna compete with the big boys then you at some point have to beat the big boys so but i also think and i don't know if i've said that on here before I think he could have a seriously successful career. Let's say he chose not to go down the like title fight route. Like he is so entertaining coming out with this song, Shuey on the cage afterwards. He should just get fucking fed uh, like sloppy journeyman to just fucking switch their brains off. And then and become then and become a journeyman himself, like a cowboy or like a fucking... Yeah, but just like where 
Dana's like, listen, this guy's fucking box office. He's, he's great to watch. He gets the crowd absolutely ripping and tearing. They all just want to do shoeys with him. So let's just roll him out, people. He's going to smash. You know, he's never going to... He may not headline a fucking pay-per-view. He might headline a fight night. Just send out someone. He goes out there. But no, but someone. I reckon he's. I reckon he pads cards well, really like, well. Like he don't make him the main views. event, yeah. but like just put him on the main card and get mm. people foaming at the mouth. Yeah. I reckon you like you put him as like the fifth fight, which is like the first fight of the main card. Either the first fight of the main card, or you could do like the third from the main event. Yeah, well, he's. The, I'm pretty sure he's the co-main on the Whitaker card, which no, is. I'm sick. happy with that. But he pads. He pads cards, dude. He gets people turned on. I like that. Yeah, no, dude, I love Bam Bam. And I'm not, and I mean, we're already talking about if he doesn't go for the title and that sort of shit. He's still young. He's got ages to go and he could very much be, you know. How old is he? That guy, he'd be 26, 7. Bam Bam, 28. 28, 28. there you go. There you go. There you go. Did you see uh, Nurmagomedov from Dagestan as well? No relation to Khabib. No relation? No. So is that like Smith? I was like, well, maybe that's just like a, a name from the region. That's what I mean, like. Like Smith. a Smith, sure. But he fucking choked this guy out in like 30 seconds. Oh, did he? Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, those fuckers up there in the mountains, they had a roll, yeah, bro. Dude, Jesus can... Christ. 30 the seconds. The guy tapped as soon as he, like, he like gets him into this fucking, I don't know nothing about rolling, so I don't fucking, he got him to some sort of headlock. Yeah. And as soon as they hit the ground, the guy tapped. He's like, fucking get Fuck me this. out of get here. Get me out of here. This is etch. I would love the experience of rolling with someone who is fucking elite. Like, not just a jujitsu or something, but, like, also that, like, the a wrestler where you're just like, oh, I have, like, I'm getting swarmed by it. Like, absolutely swarmed by this person and I can't do anything. Like, it would be interesting to feel that feeling of, like, overwhelmed and, like, helpless. Imagine having Angano laying on you. Bro. And then, like, like dropping obvious, elbows on yeah, your yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, face. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, that's ridiculous because I'm, my frame wouldn't be able to support his body weight. No, my, you'd my, turn my to ribs, dust. Well, my ribs would cave in. Yeah, top. or you'd turn to diamond. I'd turn to diamond. He would turn me into a diamond. Yeah. Pressure makes diamonds. Do you get it? Do you get it? Yeah. Playing along at home. He'd turn me into a diamond. But it would be interesting to feel it just for a moment, just yes. for a second, just for a, for, just for a pinch. Just for a pinch. And then I'd tap. And I go, get the fuck off me. I need yeah. to go home. I'm going to go cry backstage. Yeah, we'll probably with a quick stop off at the hospital just to check my vitals. Just to check the vitals. Um, but anyway, I think that's fine. Well, almost. Jeez, doesn't, Wells does not look like a footy player. Um, the the co-main event, Brandon Moreno, Figueroa, did you watch the fight? Yes. Hectic fight. Yeah. Very close fight, very hectic fight. That They're probably going to be the first fighters in UFC history to fight four times. Mm. Their first fight was a draw. Second fight, uh, Moreno won the title off Figueredo. Third fight, which was yesterday, Figueredo won it back. It was by no means... It was a close fight. And I, I'm comfortable with Figueredo being named the winner. But I would have also been comfortable with Moreno potentially like holding on Bruce to it. Booze rung out. Yeah, that was it was a very Mexican crowd and Moreno Mexican. Um but he just got fucking dropped a couple of times. Yeah. He might have done a bit more, but he got fucking dropped and it's a hard one to tell. It would be good to watch fights with an expert or someone where you can just go, "All right, how did you score that one?" What are you seeing? So it's you know, how like if scoring? we were to do our companions but then we've got someone who's just there. They don't even need to be dribbling and yarn and all that much, but they can just like, we can just turn to them for a bit of expert advice. It'd be good. It'd be great to have an expert because mm. I'm a dribbler yeah. and I don't know anything. Nothing. Nothing at all. Zero. And sometimes you don't get enough from the telecast, like from the commentary yes. on the telecast, which is probably because they can't just talk the fucking whole time. No. Like they need the, the drama to play Color. out a little bit. But it would be nice to have an expert going, this is what's happening, this is what's happening, this is how I'd score it, this is how I say it, this is what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. That'd be good. Because the amount of times that, you know, like you get to an end of a round or like an end of a fight and I've had like, you know, you, me, Street and Jarch sitting around and I'm like, I am confident that I know who's won that fight. And then it's like, oh, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> I don't know. 
Well, that's part of being a dead shit. Yes, it is. It's a real strong part of being a dead shit is thinking you know things when you clearly don't. Now, on fighting, actually, what's happening with Jake Paul and Mike Tyson? Is that bullshit or is that legit? I think that there's legit conversations about it. If you're hearing about it, I think there's legit conversations. It's, you can't not respect him if he's doing that. Like, I would assume Mike Tyson knocks him dead, but, like, why do I assume that? Because it's Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is 50s. Yeah, he's old. He's old. Jake Paul, 25. He's, like, 6'2". What's Mike Tyson, 5'10"? Yeah, but it's Mike fucking Tyson. I know it is, bro. I know that. I'm not, I, I understand that. But Mike's old now. The thing that Mike is old, but he's a boxer. It's yes. the first time Jake will afford a boxer with boxing skills whose life... You would like, have to think Mike's favourite. 100%, dude. Has, if, did, Mike, did Mike fight someone semi-recently? He fought Roy Jones. How did that go? I can't on remember. On an undercard of a Jake Paul thing, I think. Uh, I think it was a bit of a shit show in that like, it was exhibition, so they couldn't hit each other in the head. I don't think he looked bad, though. Like He's still doing he's, uh, there's some training videos of Mike Tyson. You're like, oh, he's still, like, still terrifying. It says here there's a – so Jake Paul has said he only wants to fight in professional bouts, but because Mike Tyson's over 55, it's not considered a professional bout. So, it, I mean, there, there was this interview with Mike Tyson a couple of days ago, um, and he was saying, like, there's a lot of talk. He doesn't know. It's not confirmed yet, um, but it would be worth $100 million. I heard the other day that Jake Paul's fucking pay-per-view numbers for that Woodley fight were, like, absolutely appalling. I think they were shit, but he's made $45 million in 2021. That's how much he's made off fighting. $45 million. Yeah. That's legit. Yeah. So his pay-per-view numbers couldn't have been that horse shit. Or well, maybe not, they get well, it all off the yeah, game Yeah, you're shit. not only getting pay-per-view, you're also going to be, like, endorsements and it'll be fucking... Showtime Boxing would pay him money to just fucking do it, I would think. Like, you wouldn't just be on pay-per-view. But it'd be, a part, it'd be a large part of it. Fucking cra million. crazy world we live in. Isn't surely surely Conor McGregor fights him. Yeah, he might one day. But, dude, the size difference there is fucking ridiculous as well. That's what's crazy. Like, people going, yeah, but, you know, like, you fucking... Did you see what he did to Woodley? And it's like, Dana made a great point. And he's like, yeah, if I put Woodley... They're like, no one really did that to Woodley in the UFC. It was like, dude, if I put Woodley in a fucking weight class with people way bigger than him, then they would do that to him. That's why he did it. He's a shitload bigger than him. Yeah. Again, though, like, I mean, Whatever. Jake Paul three years ago was not even a fighter. So, like, I mean, I, you can't not respect what the fuck's going on, but it's weird. It's weird. It is weird. The world doesn't make sense at the moment, and this is just one portion of the world that isn't. Well, it's it's sense. A, it's a it's a considerable portion of the world that doesn't make sense. Yeah, considerable, um, and that seems to be happening more and more. So, you know, like apparently, I don't know if this is relevant, Tom, mm. but it's probably worth telling you. Yep. I was watching a video earlier. Supposedly, the best chess computer in the world was beaten recently by another chess computer that was just going it was it was told these are the rules of chess like work out the strategy yourself four hours and it beat the greatest chess computer in the world yeah in four hours it like taught itself how to play and beat it in four hours so that's where we're at so we have a new greatest chess computer in the world yeah supposedly and these chess computers are better than humans yeah dude the first chess computer beat a human like fucking ages ago. And we haven't been able to beat it? No. Like, so it's undefeated? Well, like humans can't beat it, no. We, once we lost, that was it. That's that was what like, I mean. Once we lost to a chess computer, though, we haven't beaten it? No, because they just keep getting better and better. Right, but like surely the like... The brain is still capable of no. like improving in chess. But not at the rate the computer is. I just told you, one, one just learned how to fucking play and dominate in four hours. I know. With, also, it didn't have access to past games that people had played. So it didn't have past access. So it just had to work out what's possible. It didn't what's have access to, like, chess knowledge. It just had, these are the rules. That was it. Yeah, I don't like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't like to hear that. Neither do I. But again, it's further evidence of crazy times, Tom. The world's, it's just not, you know. You know what we do need? And this is we don't need be, a chess soup. This is going to be a perfect segue. Which oh, I think this is what we do need as people, particularly as Australians. I think we need Aussie Ash to win the Australian Open. Yes. Because an Australian hasn't won the Australian Open since 1978. That's a long fucking time. Yes, it is. And I think that when Australia was great at tennis, the world made more sense. When we're winning slams, the world makes more sense. Mm -hmm. I'm talking more about the Australian Open here. Obviously, um, Aussie Ash has won Wimbledon a couple of years ago, but and, and the, the French. French. But the Australian Open, winning the Australian Open, I think is going to get us back to neutral. You think it might even cure COVID down here, Ed? I'm I'm not ruling it out, Tom. Mm. I think Mal Gowan might think about opening the borders if Aussie Ash What's it going to take for him to open the borders? Do you think it's an Aussie Ash win? I think win? it might be an Aussie Ash win. And obviously the demon, Alex Demonor, is still in this competition, but Aussie Ash is world number one. Yeah. And she's a fucking big shout. Yeah. And I mean, listen, there's no commitment from Mao to say that he will open the borders, but as we do know, promises merely a figment of the imagination when it comes to Mr. Mao Gowan. Well, Matt Gowan said we're opening in February now, so like we're, in, we're not opening indefinitely, indefinitely, which is a frightening... Frightening thing to do. Like, if you had business interests in WA... Or family. Or family, like, bruh, or family. Family. Which, like, heaps of people do. We'll do the 14 days quarantine. It's like, bruh, you need to chill the fuck out. This thing's not going anywhere. And also, like, look at all the other states. And he's like, oh, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to like ninety percent double vaccination, and then we'll open up. Oh, wait, actually, you need to get boosted. By the time everyone's got boosted, you're you're gonna need another one again. It's crazy. It's actually fucking. It's like scary and it's sad. I don't know how the WA Indians feel about this, Western Australians. Yeah, but like, you are you getting rattled by this shit? Are you are you into it? I like can't at, tell. At what point are you guys just going to go, hey, fuck off. Like, let us just live now. Like, let us rejoin the rest of the country. When do you it ain't that bad. When do you take to the streets? I know as Australians, we're not big street takers, but when do you well, take? If you take to the streets, you are branded an anti-vaxxer. So that's, a, that's an inherent problem with taking to the streets is you're just, they well, just basically not, say not a, swarm of anti-vaxxers. Not, not, not if enough people do it. Maybe. I not don't if know. enough people do it. I don't know. Dave, are you, were you or were you just being tongue-in-cheek before the show when we were talking about Mr. Mao? Are you pro Mao? Are you pro locking down? Uh, I'm not nearly as anti as you are. To the, So you're not, you don't find like. the behaviour... Um, I don't know. I, haven't, I don't follow it that closely. I think it, you can look at it in lots of different ways. You can look at it and say that I don't think they've, or they've had like one death from COVID... And I think their economy isn't too bad because they didn't really have to do a full shutdown like for three months like we did. I don't think it's all bad. There's probably some good stuff that's come of that. Like, but don't you they think they're just kicking the fucking... Moving the goalposts? Yeah. But well, also like just, just slowing down the, the problem. Inevitable. They're yeah. just kicking down the problem down the fucking road. Well, yeah. yeah, it would be a good solution if everyone else got on board with the same and then within like three months there'd be no COVID. But the problem is there's always going to be COVID well, coming yeah, from exactly. New South Wales. and. But there's never Victoria. not going to be COVID. Yeah. So no matter what, even if everyone locked down, like there's never not going to be COVID because people are coming in. Well, I mean, maybe if everyone did for like two months, but yeah. I so you're saying, yeah. what, if everyone locked down for two months? We were close. That's the frustrating thing. We were so, like New Zealand almost did it as well. They yeah, but they did it. But they didn't because you but can't. The, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If everyone kind of did it at the same yeah. time. Yeah, what it, do you mean though? Like what, and then what happens when you open up the borders from international? Or are we saying no one's allowed to come to the country anymore? No, that's... No, that's, but that's what I'm trying to say is that it, the strategy that WA are taking would work if everyone else did the same thing. On the planet? I guess so, yeah. Right, so we are but trying not, to... Yeah. Never in the history of the earth have we had a fucking agree, like a, a global agreement on anything other than maybe like fucking Nickelback suck. Mate, if anyone can do it, Mal Well, Miguel even can. that, I don't think... And even get that... I don't think you get complete I've seen Nickelback live, no, so I'll debate Maybe that. the Parramatta won't win a comp. I don't know. But look... Let's fucking park that shit because I feel like we always get onto this topic and it's always the same fucking outcome. Do I give a fuck? No. But no. I do feel bad if you live in Western I Australia. I feel bad, but... People had booked holidays and shit, like everyone was planning to like fucking go back and see if they just cancel everything. You're oh like, no. oh my God. But 
But I don't know what the reasoning is. Sorry, just to I don't. Who understand. cares? I know, but I don't Fucking, know what the reason is. I think the weird thing is he's the reason. He's is, you know though. what the reason is? It's like he's he's fucking loving it. People are probably loving him. I don't know. You but know, he's got like almost complete control of parliament there. Yeah, yeah that's why yeah. it's called. Mal-Gown. What's his approval rating though? Is that going down? I wonder. I don't know. It's Surely it still. is. But then he, I imagine every politician's approval rating is going down at the moment. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Eddie. But can Aussie Ash? Can Aussie Ash get the job can done? Can Aussie Ash open the border? Maybe. Yeah, she can. 88, 88% can. approval rate. 88%. <laughs> wow. You West Australians are fucking freaks with the greatest respect. Uh, Aussie Ash can cure COVID, can bring down the wall. She can bring the wall down, I think. And I just think it will come you along. Know, can, can I, sorry, could I just cut you off there? You know what else will bring down the wall? If the king and the cock get the doubles. Well, obviously, I was getting there. Okay. I didn't know we needed another Woody's until I've seen the cock and the king in action. Yep. King cock. King cock. I am loving their work. Absolutely loving it. It does show what a little bit of personality can do to the sport of tennis. Yeah. Or to the format of doubles. Or to the format of doubles, which largely has been the ugly duckling of the tennis world. Yes. Um... Obviously not as ugly as mixed, but <laughs> <laughs> but ugly nonetheless. Ugly nonetheless. Slightly hotter than mixed, but not much hotter. <laughs> no, not much hotter. Uh, and no offense to mixed. I'm just you know look at the prize money yeah. discrepancies, and you get you get some indication of where what mixed, mixed is at. Sits. Um, but it's fucking entertaining because I think we can all agree, punters and dribblers, that. Without Roger, without Nadal, without Djokovic, without the big three, the rest of the tennis world is pretty fucking vanilla. It's yep. pretty boring. Like, you've got characters in there, like Gaon on Fee and shit. He's like, hardly that much of a character. But he's but he's he's better than, like, fucking Medvedev. He is more of a character than, than Medvedev. Like, bro, Medvedev. You guys are, like, cardboard boxes. So yeah. fucking boring. But King and Cock, dude... So sick, getting in, almost getting in punch-ons in the we punch-ons in the, with the Croatian. Uh, oh, let me send you a video, Dave. That we'll need to get. Oh, that looks fucking. So, dark. do you know what happened there? Yeah. So, like, they hit the ball because, like, in doubles, you got to go for the body a little bit because they've got sharp hands. You've got to go for it. And it's just pass, part and parcel of playing good, elite, honest doubles. So they beat the number one seeds in the world, and then their coach tried to punch on with them in the. Came into the change rooms here. We'll get the video up, Dave. I just sent it to you on WhatsApp. Um, we can potentially even just get the headphones on. But did for you it. hear the the press conference? That's the one that I sent to you, right? When Co- yeah, Cox yeah, yeah. Co- we'll, we'll play it. We'll okay. play it. We'll play it. Because basically, the Croatian. Um, so they were the the guys that the, the King and Cock beat were the number one seeds in doubles, which is already a lull of just like the seeding process of doubles. I didn't even think about it. And it's like, we're the number one seeds. It's like, relax, dude. It's doubles. Anyway, King and Cock pumped them. Straight setties, I believe. Correct. Uh, then obviously they were doing their flashy Gen Y or Gen fucking Z millennial fucking Whatever. shtick on court, being funny, you know, shaking the shoulders, all that sort of shit. The Croatians, who obviously I share some affinity with, I've got to acknowledge... In my family, there's some Croatians. Fiery motherfuckers came in and we're about to hear. Do we want to get headphones up, Dave, just because then we'll roll into drills or is that a pain in the ass? Uh, no, well, no, because to do a headphones on there, I have to take my computer to the TV screen. Okay, and fuck it. We'll just play it from here. Yeah. But so this is basically King and Cock uh, press conference. This is the match after they beat the Croatians. So they got another win, but they were explaining what happened when um, the Croatian trainer came in to the uh the the sheds as it were after they beat them and started fucking threatening them well, just can you shed some light as to what happened after your last game in the uh the locker room you, you... mate it was pretty funny i'm not gonna lie me and nick are trying to be professional so we went into the gym after our doubles match maybe one of the first times ever hmm. i'm gonna be honest it was pavich's fitness trainer he came up and he smashed a foam roller against the pole as hard as he can, and I thought he was kind of joking. I wasn't sure if he was about to berate his players. And he came up to Nick and said, we we're being disrespectful, and uh, we Nick hit the opponent with a ball, but that's normal. These doubles players have got unbelievable hands, so you have to go at them. And they said we we're showboating, but 
you know, I'm sure if we played away in Croatia, it would have been the same thing. So it was just our energy. And I think at the end of the day, they were a bit salty. They lost. They've won their fair share of tournaments. Yeah. So I don't know. I thought they'd handle, handle losing a little better than that. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to entertain the crowd. We didn't mean anything disrespectful. We're trying to get yeah. ourselves and our energy up. It was, uh, it was a little aggressive on his part, though, for yeah, sure. And just, you know, enjoy flight, don't. <laughs> We'll move to our online journalist now. If you have a question, please use the raise your hand function now. Yes, we will take a question. Such a fucking shit stirrer, dude. He's such a shit stirrer. He's such a shit stirrer. Right. Uh, enjoy your flight home. Uh, 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 uh. Like it's he's such a cocky little shit, he's and I a love cocky it. Cocky little shit. He, I can understand how if you're the number one student devils, and you've won your first year of tournaments, and these lippy little fuckers, yeah, pumping up the crowd, like hitting you in the body with a ball and shit, but just bundle you out in straight sets. You'd be fucking ropeable. Yeah, you'd be like you little cunts. And there's like a perfect balance there, though, where Kokonakis is, he's speaking truthfully. Honestly, and like, you know, maybe didn't mean any disrespect, which like I believe hearing Kokonakis speak, right? Like, sorry, there's, uh, like, I believe that he's not like, it's not that. But then King sitting next to him, it's like they are a bit of a yin and a yang. And it's like, then the King's like, anyway, enjoy your flight home. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's like, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. And it's, they're both sitting giggling like they're in like Yeah, giggling grade. kids yeah. like they're, yeah, it was, it was fucking funny. And that would make it, you hate them even more. <laughs> oh yeah, one hundred percent. It's just good, honest tennis. Yeah, I was going to say rugby league. <laughs> no, but it's it good feels, honest rugby it, league. It feels like rugby. It league. It is good honest bit. rugby league. But it's, uh, I um, curious. I saw a quote this morning as well where he was like, um, he was like, yeah, the tennis, whatever the world, WT, ATP, a, ATP. Oh. No, no, Australia, WTO. the world. Oh, world tennis. WTO. WTO. Some, he's just, WTO? Whatever the World Tennis no. fucking organization is. Is whatever. there one? The governing body of World Tennis? Well, there's eight, I thought there's ATP, ATP and, then the te, and then the women's is... W. <laughs> the WTO is the World Trade Organization. Is yeah. ATP the Australian tennis? No, ATP is men's tennis and then W... In w Australia or just... Globally. Okay, then whatever that WTA might be. WTA is the women's one, isn't yes. it? Um, but basically just saying they've spent the last 10 years gassing up three players. That's it. Now you've got a fucking um, charisma shortage and it's only the king and the cock and mainly the king really you got a serious charisma shortage yeah. and it wasn't like the big three were dripping in charisma no they were just dripping in talent yes federer had charisma federer had charisma obviously different sort of charisma they, and they, look you know what they did they all did nadal would do his jokes after the games and then federer and and uh, sorry Djokovic would do his jokes after the games nadal and federer were like the same had the same sort of charisma, but from different, like, you know, parts of the world. Yes. And that's why no one knows who the fuck anyone else is. Yeah. It's also the other guy's fault for not doing anything. Yes. Whereas the king is, like, the, the funniest motherfucker on the tour. Or yeah. the most, like, watchable. He, the stuff against Medvedev, even though he lost, it was like, my God, this is good to watch. It was so entertaining. When he won that third set, I was foaming at the mouth. Yeah. The CU, though, embarrassing now. We're over that. I don't know if it's still going, but that's just lame as shit. Man. Oh, it's fucking... Well, it's, it's annoying. It reminds yeah. me of the Vuvuzela. I'm like, shut the fuck yeah, up. Shut the fuck up. It's painful. Yeah. Now, before we move on to the dribbles, Eddie, I will just say this. Uh, LA Rams up 27-13, fourth quarter. This has got a Tom Brady fucking... Well, he just needs two TDs. Yeah, this and has got a Tom Brady comeback minutes. on the cards here. They were down 27-3 at the half. They were. Oh! oh that would have been a touchdown just That would have been. And that's the thing though, right? Like, I wonder if you're a defensive team and you're seeing like, okay, they only need two touchdowns. We've got, they've got shit loads of time. And it's like, this is, what, this is what Tom Brady does. You would be starting to shit yourself a little bit. Yeah, you'd be starting to poo your pants. There'd be a little bit of poops in there. Oh, that was a great uh, block. Would you call that not a block? Yeah. Well, a block I feel like is what they're doing in the deflection. It's like a stop. Stop. Bat down. Batten yeah, down the bat. hashes. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Oh, oh sacked. That's Tommy what sacked. When, that's what happens when you're 44. You can't move so quickly. Tommy sacked. Gonna need to get the. Wow. Do they go fourth and? Do they go fourth down, Tom? Oh, what are they going to do? Punt? There is time. You probably just punt, don't you? Are they, I think they're they in field goal range. range. Maybe oh. just. 
but only just. Yeah, for those dribblers who've been watching the NFL this weekend, there's been a couple of great upsets. Both the first seeds in the two games yesterday lost. Who are they? So the Tennessee Titans finished top of the division. Yeah. And they lost. To who? They lost to the Bengals. Top of the conference. Shit. Yeah. And then um, the Packers, who were favorites as well, lost to the 49ers in minus. <gasps> Going for it. Oh. Oh, flag. Flag. That's a personal foul after the pass. That could be a first down. But yeah, both those games yesterday were won with a kick in the last second. Really? Yeah. So both this conference Cham- winners, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So not champions. No, no, winners. sorry, but the favourites. So the winner of this will play the 49ers, which will be interesting. To and play then, off for the Super Bowl. Yes. And then the game after this is Bills versus Chiefs. Today? Yep. Today. Sick. And I still have to go and sit in a Macca's for 24 hours and pound cheeseburgers. <laughs> don't think we've forgotten that. When are you going to do that? I don't know. We'll work that out. We'll work that out. We've got a lot of things to do. We need to plan the Super Bowl as well. Fuck, we do. Okay, we'll do that after this. Um, <laughs> should we dribble? All right. Time for a bit of dribble, punters, dribblers. We're back. It's been a long time between dribbles. Um, so it'll be good to get it uh, back in. Dave, are these, is this like an amalgam of the entire off season, or is this just sort of like... I kind of went as far back as December 18, which was pretty far back. That's a long way back, yeah. dude. That's a lot of shit. Yeah, so, it was yes. a lot of shit. Um, now, you can find the number for the Dribbler Hotline in the bio on the Hello Sport Instagram page. So go there if you want to find the number because it is not in my head. But keep the Dribblers 90 seconds. If they're good, you'll get on. If yeah. they're shit, you won't. Hey, boys, Ironside here. Um, I'm assuming this won't get played because, um, well, Dave never plays any of the Disciples dribbles anymore. Um, As you know, Ironside here, uh, Baggy Green member, um, member of uh, the Hell School 11 and the Disciples. Um, Just getting an Uber here. For Alex? Yeah, Yeah, we're in the Uber, boys. Um, But just a quick shout-out to Dave um, for... Never, ever, ever playing any Disciples dribbles anymore because they don't align with his shitty humour. <laughs> Many a time have I got in uh, Dave's defence. Uh, you know, I quite like Dave, but the amount of dribbles that are getting played and then to not play my shit dribble from Bathurst with many of the V8 driving around in the background is um, somewhat of a disgrace. Uh, so, Dave, I know you're listening to this. It probably won't get played, but, mate, fuck you. <laughs> you're nothing... Tom and Eddie of the podcast, and uh, yeah, stop Dioring. You've dropped the ball on Dioring. Mate, you want my respect back? Start Dioring quicker and start playing some fucking decent dribble luck like in the good old days. Cheers. Tell you what, Dave, that's a licking. Mm-hmm. That, that was, was a lick. I got a bit of an in person licking from Ironside himself when I bumped into him at the SCG during the test. Oh. I kind of had to cop that dribble in person as well from him, Finachario. Dude, the, the uh, disciples are uh, the disciples. From what I hear, trying to like throw their weight around, like as in, I think they're almost like a militia, like they're sort of like an intimidation. Like the IRA, they're yeah, a, they're a faction of the they're a faction community. of the dribblers, and they're they're, they're they're small in number, but because they carry some heavy hitters in there, you know, they try and swing their dicks around. A lot of legacy members in there. Yeah, They're exactly. They're almost becoming a bit elitist, I would say. Well, there's a uh, you know you you do see things in there where it's like one of the disciples has been sent out to like leave a comment in the punters and dribbles about something they're not happy with. And I mean, listen, I mean, we, we allow whatever they fucking, like, we don't give a fuck no, in terms of like, it. we support, we support the, uh, look, we don't even really know who's in the disciples. But I've we, got absolutely no idea. I now, I now know Ironside's I in know there. Ironside's in there and Finichario's in there. And I'm pretty sure KTD's in there. I think Danny's in there as well. But there's, um, you know, there's some OGs in there. They've earned their right to be in the Disciples, um, but they are a bit of a clandestine organisation, even though Ironside just mentioned them like 12 times in that one dribble. Should I be worried that one day they're going to mount a coup against me and install a new Dior? Yeah, overthrow you. Yeah. Do you... Well... Do they personally attack you? Like, because, you know, they will not attack you. Are they, are they ever, like, in your DMs personally? Like, hey, no, Dave, no, fuck no, you. None of that. No, nah. sometimes I think I'll get a message from 
someone who's left a dribble and just being like, oh, yeah, play my dribble. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's not a way to get your dribble played. Yeah. Yeah, if you're a disciple and you're someone who's, you yeah. know, if you're a disciple and side, you have to then, run. you know. If you're a disciple and you have to rely on like messaging and prompting us to play the dribble, then maybe your dribble wasn't that good. Well, that's also something they need to be prepared for. But also Ironside's someone who's, um, I guess you could say it, he, he's... He carries a lot of weight. He carries a lot of weight. He's reached a point where, you know, does his opinion matter? Absolutely not. But does it, does he, does his opinion get heard because of who he is? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, because of his services to plumbing. Yeah, and, and dribble into dribbling yarn. Dave, can you turn it up a little bit on the next one, please? Yeah. These headphones stink. Uh, okay. Uh, let me work out which one you are. And I can hear nothing. Shout out to the disciples. How's your volume, Tom? Uh, mine was all right. I wonder, I wonder who's in the Disciples. I wonder if like Kendrick's in there. Kendrick should be in there. That would be my belief. Kendrick deserves a seat at the table. Right. Chum, Eddie, dear Dave, it's your boy Pete Murray Dribbler. <laughs> and we have the uh, drive through Dribbler here. We've just had a few vegan biscuits, uh, as you say. And the um, the drive through dribbler just a little bit nervous, so he just want me to say the intro before we put him on to tell you a good come on story. Here you go. So uh, with Brisbane based dribblers, we're uh, driving up to the. I was driving up to the sunny coast. Um, just wanted a quick coffee on the way up there, sort of start my Saturday right. Quickly pulled into the Rappers uh, drive through. Didn't want to stop, keep on the road, sort of thing, and. Um, I've driven up to the drive-thru after having my order taken, a couple of coffees and some smashed avo on toast. Um, and the the worker's standing there just sort of smiling with me, uh, smiling at me with the food in his hands. And he goes, the, the bloke in front of you paid for your order. And uh, I think I owe you a, come on! <laughs> after seeing me wearing a bit of uh, the latest Hello Sport merch on the head. Firstly... Shout out to whoever shouted me the food. I'm assuming it's the guy in front of me or if the Zarafas bloke has put a little sneaky in with the manager <laughs> and, and given me a free food. Um, it's great to see. So thank you very much. Beers soon. Vegan cookies soon. Um, come on. That's lovely. That's beautiful. You know what? Uh, like, come ons are all well and good, but if you can start, you know, Shouting a dribbler a feed or a beer or something without them knowing, like that sort of like the guy from across the bar wanted you to have this. Like, I think there's an element of real classy touch to that. Well, that's just classy and it's respect. Mm. It's classy respect, Tom. Yep. Which you don't see enough of. In this no, world. you don't. And what they did, the, the P and D community is all about, you know, class and respect. Class and respect and getting around each other. So like if you see someone across the way in a punters and dribblers hat, hello sport hat, beer soon shirt, fucking last dribble tee, whatever. Or if you just even suspect someone's a dribbler. Yeah. Buy them a meal. <laughs> well, you might be at a service station, you might see a dribbler in front of you and you go, you know what, I'm gonna make that dribbler's day. I'm gonna buy him a curly whirly. Yeah, or you know what? I'll pick up the petrol for well, I don't. That's a big call. I, I think I think the dollar curly whirl is probably a little bit more realistic than paying two dollars ten for fucking premium fuel. I'm not saying bucks. that you should pay for their fuel, but if you're a dribbler of means, some are. Listen, I don't think that there's going to be many instances where someone's going to shout six hundred dollars worth of petrol for a dribbler in front of them just because they're wearing a hat. But you never know. Six hundred dollars. Well, You're all know. over the map today. I'm just. I was. I was using. Shout an example. fuel. Six hundred bucks. I was using an example of like fuel being very expensive and filling up a truck to fill up a tank. Two bucks a fucking liter is two ten. I saw two, that. That is fucking disgraceful. Two ten. That is. You know what's funny? It's Couldn't like, it. but it's like. I don't know why that is. Like, why is that just gone up? Because they've just. It's like opportunistic shit. Oh, I don't think anyone knows, Tom. But it's like, you know, everyone gets angry. It's like, look at these fuckers like buying multiple rolls of toilet paper. It's like, what about the like petrol companies just jacking the price? Oh, well, I don't know if they're jacking it or if it's a supply thing. I don't know. I mean, and I, have like I done convenient. any research? No, no, I just, I basically just cop it. Yeah, well, everyone does, right? Cops it in the mouth. Not everyone. People drive halfway across the state to 
say five cents, not realizing the what inherent they're actually because you're burning petrol doing that. Yeah, you've just spent a tank. Yeah, to, to go get, and do to that. Say five cents and then drive back. Not many people either, Eddie. You say people like it's most people. I think most people just cop it in the fucking mouth. I said people, yeah. as in some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the majority of people just cop it. Apparently, just, it's fair and square in the dirt. Apparently, oil prices are high at the moment, which is why it's expensive. But, and you guys may be able to, you know, confirm or deny this. Was there not like a huge oil shortage or prices were really high, like around 2010, like the global financial crisis? There was something going on with oil, oil there. And then it got really expensive, but then prices just never dropped. Prices have not gone down ever. I, I remember them being. I don't bo- ever remember seeing two dollars ten. This is the highest. No, this I've is. Ever seen that's it. what I mean, though. It just keeps trending up. But like I fucking remember house when I was prices. young, it used to be like below a dollar. Yes. Correct. Correct. Well. Yes. Hundred percent. It did. Yeah, but I'm. But I sometimes I I query this guy. I'm like, well, I wouldn't have been very old when that was the case. Like he would have been like one. We're talking about Crash, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true, Dave. If you were fucking talking about it, like. How, it was under a dollar when I was like 10. Yeah. How much older than you are we? How old are you? I'm 23. How many times do you reckon we ask this kind of age? 23. Right. So I'm like so. 10 years older than you. So I don't think you ever saw anything under a dollar personally. But I remember, I believe I remember between like 70 and 90 cents a litre. When diesel used to be like 50 cents. Well, cents. yeah, I never had diesel. I've never been, I never had a diesel car. So I've never even looked at the diesel. But I remember it being, well, to be honest, I wouldn't have a fucking clue what I've had when I was little. But... I remember being under a dollar comfortably because then I remember all of the hootenanny and hoopla and hullabaloo when it was going over a buck and everyone's like, this is fucked. But now it's just like two bucks is, is fucking three ridiculous. Bucks, is three bucks in our future? Probably do. possible? But that's what I'm talking about. Like, are we just getting fucked because they're like, well, you need it now. So we're just going to keep putting the price up and what are you going to do? Walk? Bet you don't. Bet you don't walk. Look, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. But it might be. What is the difference really when you see petrol and it's like, well, the ultimate premium, super clean premium. Then there's the like something a little less, 95. And then there's the fucking- There'd have to be a difference. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to sell it at a different price. Right, but is the difference- consumer- What I mean though, is the difference actually going to fuck your car at all? Or should you just- Well, some cars are like, don't use less than 95. Like it says it on the cap. Yeah. So That's yeah. It says here. So it obviously does something if they're saying that. I know, but maybe they're in with the fucking petrol company, bro. I don't know. Tin four. What do you uh, use? I use ninety five and up. Whatever the best one is, and whatever the second best one is. Ninety eight is the best. Yeah, and, and then ninety five. Um. But that's also because yeah, there's like one with ethanol, and I'm like, I don't know what that means. Yeah, that's the one I go for because that's a cheap one. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. the one I used it's, to use. It says that's, what Fergie, that's one I used to That's use. what Ferg used to get. Yeah, yeah, and that's what Ronnie ethanol. Bergs used to get. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the good ethanol stuff. <laughs> it says E10 petrol is a slightly higher octane than regular. Um, so your engine performs better. Sorry, E10 is lower. So yeah, like obviously the more premium ones are higher octane. E10 being ethanol. Yeah, yeah. So 10%. You know, it means your engine performs better. With ethanol. No, 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 with the better fuel. Right, okay. So 98 makes your engine perform better than 95. Yeah, and I just want to know how much better. Like so what's E10, the- I don't know. E10 petrol is also has a higher bioethanol content, which can be corrosive to rubber parts, seals, metals, and plastics. Okay, so it so fucks, it can cause your, engine it fucks your engine damage. Um, it burns quicker, E10, than 98 or 95. So, I mean, it's better petrol. Yeah, okay. And also I found an article from 2004, which was saying that petrol prices are about to go over a dollar a litre. Right, so that was then, were you alive in 2004? I was six years old. It was my first year of school where we okay. were clearly learning about petrol prices. Yeah, so. yeah, So I was yeah. 13, I said 10, I was close enough. I felt like, yeah, 10, 10 to 13 is basically the same. Age. Yeah, that was an article predicting it. So it could have fluctuated in the year surrounding. You that. don't remember that when you were six. No, anyway. there's no way you do. You just remember like the idea that it happened. Yeah. Like you don't remember anything from that age. I'm, I'm an old soul. I couldn't have memories before I was even alive. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand that. Um, okay. Should we I move on? I think it's time to go. Yeah. To the next rule. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Tom, Eddie, Dio, Dave. Punters and dribblers. Dribblets also. I've got one thing to say, and it's from the great man, Marnus himself, the number one test batter in the world. No run! Okay, sure. Right. 
You know well, what I liked about welcome that Welcome back to the dribbles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. dribbly shit. Yeah, that is. That's welcome back to the dribbles. Man, run. Yeah, that's really welcome back to the dribbles. At least it was short. That's why I liked it. Yeah. It was short and it was mildly entertaining. Did yeah. I laugh out loud? No. No. Uh, you, your comment was funnier than the dribble. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's not surprising. No, that's not. On we go. Tom Brady about to get Legend, bummed out. You've only given me 90 seconds. It's a Gen X dribbler here. Sounds Just Gen coming X. to you. No, it's just getting me. straight into it. I've got, a gen, I've got a generational problem that I think Eddie Simpson needs to know about. All right, currently, 2010, any child born after this date is a generation alpha. That's Tom's two girls. Don't fuck with them. They will fuck you up. That is going to last 15 years. That's actually 2025, which leaves us now. I've just ticked over 2022. Eddie Simpson, you need to get on the fucking train, my friend, because the clock is ticking. I've made the assumption as a proud Dabonian, mate, you're only going to want minimum three kids. So if you go uh, nine-month gestation with a four-month gap, and four months is uh, probably being a little bit uh, nice on the... I don't think the ladies would be happy with that sort of time frame. But if we give you four months into the nine-month gestation, mate, if you uh, can get one away on the 1st of Feb... 2022, your third will be born on the 31st of the 12th, 2024. Following that, they've just named the next generation, and it's Generation Beta. <laughs> so, my friend, you need to get a fucking, because if you don't get going, mate, you're going to couple a couple of beaters around your ankle. <laughs> and I reckon, uh, as a Hello Sport podcast uh, doyen, if you, that is a uh, life of shame for that poor child. So uh, get to a big fella. All right. Gen X soon. Greatest generation ever. Be soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Generation X, eh? Shout out to Gen X. Shout Shout I feel Gen like X. I've forgotten. Yeah, the forgotten generation. Well, like, you know, they didn't really, they don't know how to use, like, technology and shit. Yeah, and they but they just, need to because yeah. they're not that old. They just love, like, corn and Limp biscuit and fucking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mud vein. And tell everyone they're born in the fucking early 80s. Yeah, we um, get it. You guys had some fucking emotional get it. You're born shit to in deal with. That's you guys fine. used to fucking riot. I get it. We're but baggy, baggy fucking pants and wallet chains and fucking, you know. Wallet chains. Well, wallet chains were in for us as well. Yeah, but we were kids when Gen X were like, fuck yeah, we're fucking young and angry. It's like we got a bit of that sort of cultural shit down to us because like I liked Limp Bizkit, but I wasn't defined by them. I didn't have a fucking red New Era Yankees hat, but I wanted one. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. So Eddie, you've got a couple. You've got a I've few got work years. To do. You got work to do. At least I, to get one out. I well, think. I think I'm going to say that I'll have you're, one out. You're, you're almost going to have at least. Two, well, like, I don't know how many kids you have, but you're going to. You've got at least one beater in you. Unfortunately, I've got. I've got one beater in me. I think. I think it's. I think it's safe to assume that I've got one beater. in Well, me. you could pull off a little sneaky move and have twins. Or tripos. Triplets. If you have tripos, you're done, I yeah. assume. You don't want tripos, though. No disrespect mm -hmm. to tripos, but that's a fucking... I just can't imagine, like, how difficult that would be. It'd be too much. It'd be far too much. Far, far too much. I think... you will. I mean, based on what he's just said, I think I've got a beater in me. Well, we'll have to see how that plays out. They're not really setting the generation up for success, though, are they? No, they're not. Good to know that I have got a couple little alphas. You do. Like that. I didn't entirely know what the fuck he was talking about until it sort of... The oh, they went over your head, did they? No, just for a moment. Not for long, though. I'm pretty quick. How but, quick? Well, quick enough. Quick enough. Good um, but it's funny because you could tell that guy was a Gen X. You could hear it in his voice. The moment he opened his mouth, I'm like, that guy's Gen X. He sounded a, li a little bit like Runner initially. Who? Runner Bath. Oh, he did actually a little bit. Could even be him. Is, is, Bar is Runner, is he fucking Gen X? He would be, wouldn't he? Are you serious? Yeah, no, of course he would. The Sorry. Fuck. So don't ask, mate. I don't know. Um, Back to bed. Shout out to Gen X's, though, and to triplets. <laughs> Hugh Allen's a triplet. Get fucked. Yep. True story. Uh, well, what are the other two? Girls? Boy and a girl. Twins? No, they're triplets. No, but sorry, I mean, like, the, I, that's a, yeah, it's out of dumb. I mean, like, are they all identical? No. Is he, neither, three sepo eggs? Yeah. Sorry, I'm shortening every word. 
I believe, th- I believe three sepo eggs. Three yes. sepo eggs, not, not not American eggs, but not not split. No, actually, not definitely, eggs, yeah. definitely. So sepo. they're all look. So three eggs fell in and fucking all got spermed on. Yeah, that is wild shit. That's wild stuff. Like at least if you got one, like two eggs, one splits, you're going okay. But this is just like, sorry, dude, you had an oversupply of bloody free rangies. <laughs> Fuck Let's me. move on. <laughs> Shout out to Hugh Allen. Yeah, punters and the dribblers. It's the teapot dribbler here. Uh, I hope we're all having a fantastic New Year's um, and ready to rip and tear in 2022. Um, a little bit bounced out today after a big big night on the source um, and currently laying in bed and onto my eighth Zupa Dupa. Um, just wanted to know your thoughts is... Uh, would you say Zupa Dupa is probably more rated than a Gatorade when you're hungover? I believe so. And what is your favourite Zupa Dupa flavour? Mine personally, a big fairy fox man. So, um, but that's it. Enjoy the rest of the yeah, week, um, your holiday period, mate, and rip and tear. Well, I would say this. I'm probably not a Zupa Dupa when hung. Like, oh, as in, that's not like my go-to. If you had one in the freezer, I'd have one. You'd have yeah, one. Sure. So I don't think you need to. It does. It's not the first thing that comes to mind. There's a little bit of admin with a Zupa Duper as opposed to just like getting delivered a Powerade. Yeah. But a Zupa Duper on a hot day when you're hungover, that's that's the Lord's work. Yeah, it is. Hundred percent. That's you, divinity. That's divinity. You have two Zupa Dupers and you should be back to back to neutral. You don't have more than two punters and dribblers because you put yourself into like a sugar coma. Yeah. And you don't want to be there. Fairy floss, the pink flavor, fucking good. Yeah, it's fucking good. That's flavor. not a bad shout. The blue one, I don't mind. That's bubble gum, Tom. Yep, bubble gum's a good flavor. Bubble gum's a good flavor. I like all of them, really. Yeah, same. I've probably got some that I like more or less, but I do like that the fa- the fairy floss and the bubble. The fairy gum. floss is probably the best flavor. Yep. I'm I'm happy to go along with that. Yep, same. Shout to Zuba Dubas. Thanks for the dribble. Hey, Tom. Eddie, Dior, P's, D's, and D's. The crispy dribbler here. Um, actually, the carby dribbler. The crispy carby dribbler. Okay. Just thinking, or just a thought or a statement, with the passing of John Madden and his influence on the NFL, uh, has the NRL missed a trick regarding Phil Gould and having the video game Gould with... 2022 with turbo on the front of it it would sell millions and millions and millions anyway shout out to the mer dribbler shout out to keith and keith at be soon i'd call it warren thank you or rabs rabs 2020 imagine if that we started rabs calling rugby league rabs, what if we just started calling rugby league rabs Who's playing the Rabs tonight? Yeah, Thursday night's a great night. Because I for used Rabs. to think Madden was called like I thought that was just another name for. It. I didn't yeah. realize football. Like, John Madden that was John the... Madden was a fucking commentator. Mm. Well, and a coach. He, I don't know if he, like, I'm assuming he played, but like this is a, obviously back in the day. I, yeah. I realized who he was, but he was a obviously a couple of a years coach ago. then commentator. But I'd call, I'd start calling it Rabs. I wouldn't call it Phil Gould. I wouldn't call it Gould. No, I wouldn't call it Gould. I'd call it Rabs. Now I know that Rabs didn't coach uh, or play, but, but you need a doyen. Yeah, Rabs, Rabs is you know, Gus becoming well. Gus is certainly like the biggest dick in rugby league, um, but Rabs is sort of like the the nice ornamental piece on the you know on the mantle. Well, he feels right, Tom. He feels right. Now, while we were doing that dribble, the uh, Bucks went in. Long fucking touchdown pass from TB12. It's now 27-22, the Rams with two minutes, 34 seconds to go. LA with the ball, second down and seven. Not that anyone cares. Oh, oh and a fumble. Oh, it's wow. all happening. It's all happening. Wow. Oh, guys, you haven't won the game. <laughs> I fucking hate this shit. The defense gets the ball and they all run to the end zone and paddle canoes. Like, cunt, you haven't won the game. Dude, How do you showboat like that? Because they're yanks, bro. I know. How many times must we go over this? But it's craziness. 
Yeah. How are you that happy when the game's on the line? Aren't you nervous? You're losing by seven points. You're Aren't not even you winning. nervous? You're not even winning. You're not even winning. You haven't been ahead the whole game. God, I hope Rain Man has money on LA or something and then the Bucks come back and win. On we go. On we press. Tom, Eddie, Dior, it's the Bloody Green Beers dribbler here. First time caller, short time lister, big time fan. Um, just catching up on the potty after my trip to Tassie over the Christmas period and um, listening to your yarns about uh, good old hog's breath and how they're sort of just going out with the times. Well, fucking Tassie must be, uh, be behind the times, I reckon. Um, it was the most packed out restaurant in the whole joint. Now, Tassie also um, never awake. If New York is the city that never sleeps, then Tassie is the state that's never awake. <laughs> uh, but it just seems as though fucking hog's breath was the only thing open. Um, I think Tassie might actually have an issue with their whole takeaway. I'm of the belief that Guzman Y. Gomez is an elite uh, Mexican takeaway joint. And for some reason, they don't have any, and they've just got sombreros. So, look, Tassie might be behind the times in a lot of things. Keen to hear your thoughts on that. But, um, yeah, sunsets at 8.47 p.m. forever, and fucking keeping your restaurants open never. Cheers, boys. Give them names. <laughs> Um, I yeah. don't think that would be shocking to anyone, even if you haven't been to Tasmania, to learn that they are a little bit behind the times down yeah, there. Yeah, land before time. It's a little bit land before timey down there. There might be dinosaurs in Tassie, like we don't really, and uncontacted Australian tribes, not even just indigenous, but just like uncontacted tribes that predate any known fucking existence of human anywhere. Who knows? No one knows. No one knows for sure. The, West Coast, enough, the though, West Coast of uh, Tasmania largely unexplored yeah they think they say like it's like the things that we've explored space and you know we don't know much about the depths of the ocean but we actually know less about the west coast of tasmania than any other place on, it's it's in the unma universe. it's unmapped yeah so <laughs> you know not surprising it's not surprising then that the only fucking meal in town is a hog's breath i wouldn't be surprised if hog's breath is new down there no well hog's breath eddie i'm actually from my sources down in tasmania it's a five-star Michelin hat restaurant. Hog's Breath, the best restaurant in town. In t in well, it's a five-star Tasmanian hat. Yeah, it's a f yeah, exactly. How many Tasmanian hats, hats has it five. got? Five. Out of five. Yeah. They love their Hog's Breath down there. Yeah. I think that it ties up footies from, from Hog's Breath. They know that they're on the way out here in, on, the, on main the mainland. And they go, where's our final roll of the dice going to be? Tassie, bang. Undiscovered, uncharted. Up. It's undiscovered, it's uncharted. They're starting to make a little bit more money. Tourism's starting to really open up down there. Let's go whack a couple of hogs breasts down there for old time's sake. Yeah. And what's the dollars rolling? Well, because it's like the first time hogs breast starts, it's like you have the, the hogs breast growth period. Yes. And then the inevitable, I'm eating at a place called hogs breast. And that's when it comes down. But whereas Tasmania's like, holy shit, look at this hot new thing with curly fries. I'd like to know if they still employ the same tactic of having like extreme sports on the televisions. Like, you know, cunts fucking skiing down mountains and like right. surfing big waves and shit. Do you remember all that stuff they used to Yeah, have? look, vaguely. I do remember that, uh, that sort of a, of a visual offering inside of establishments where usually they get you looking at it because it's a guy like fucking... Uh, wing suiting down a mountain and then it cuts to an ad and you're like ah that's how you got me watching that tv you're like i'll i'll lure you in with wing suits and like dudes diving in like red bull diving competitions and then it cuts to an ad for something you're like okay i see what you're doing well done hogs breath sure good for you good for you hogs breath good for you let's shout to hogs breath and tasmania of course tom eddie it's a reminder to all dribblers to keep their dribble short. Dribbler here. Um, and that'll be it. On we go. Great dribble. A public service announcement. Yeah. I like that. Love it. I like that. Love that. Respect that, mate. Respect it. On we go. Tom, Ooh. Eddie, Dior. This is the Wagga dribbler. Just wanted to know if you boys could give a big shout out to the Australian women's cricket team. They had a great win in a T20 over England last night. Shout out to Talia McGrath, 91 on debut. Be soon. Women's cricket forever. Fuck yeah.
Love it. Well done, girls. I did see that. They, we have such a stacked women's cricket side. They left out Elise Perry. I know. Like, Mad, like crazy. And I, like I saw a quote from Ishigo going like, uh, there's an argument to be made she's the greatest female cricketer that's ever lived. And, and, left and we can leave her out of her side. Are they resting her? Well, yeah, I think she's coming argument? back from injury. And they were just like, she's, she's going to play tests and one day is, and they were just like, why, why risk Because well, the female Ashes, the women's Ashes is like three T20s, three one days and a test. And a test. Yeah. yeah. And they're weighted yeah. accordingly. I heard someone call for that to be what men do. And I swear to God, Eddie, if I could have found those people and smacked them over the head, like not injured them, like pillow fight sort of stuff, you know, yeah, but yeah. you just need to give me a big smack with like a nice, you know, feather filled pillow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just well, like, shut the fuck let's up. Let's just get rid of all tradition. Yeah. It's the dates back yeah, to Yeah, you like, know what? Why yeah, don't we why don't we make the Ashes a fucking swimming race? <laughs> fuck it. Why not? Something different. Yeah, a relay with all the teams. Well, history and, and tradition is not important, so we might as well. No, nah, fuck Do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh 45 seconds to go and the Bucks are fourth and one. If they don't get one yard, it will be a handover. It will be and a game over. <laughs> Uh, how many dribbles you got left, Dave? Um, probably not too many because we're three days ago now. Great. Probably not too many is as vague as you'll no, get. No, it's definitely less than like five, maybe three or two. Okay. Yeah. Hey, boys. Ambo Dribbler here. Just went for my uh, inaugural hottest fuck in the summer run. Let me tell you, it was a scorcher out there. Um, I go through a phase every year where well, I'm like, I'm going to look the best I can. And then I stop running and lift weights instead. That's by the by. The visor. Never, ever have I run with a visor or walked with a visor or worn a visor in general. But you're not living. Decided to throw the Missos visor on, on this, this run. Boys, I reckon I might get, my, get me own. The hat never, never sat well with me. If you may recall, I stopped washing my hair because of you boys and still going good. Yes. Hair's looking fantastic. Send in a Let photo. me just illuminate on that. I've got dreadlocks. Um, happy to send you boys in the picture, but okay. let me know what you boys think about the visor. That's, Is the visor underrated? If you yeah. soon. <laughs> I've never okay. seen more of a 360 like look on your face just turn there, Tom. Well, he was so excited about his hair before. Well, he because I thought he was just like, I mean, you... If, unless you were like if you were setting out to get dreadlocks, then fantastic. If you weren't, then you're not doing it right. You don't need to get dreads. You still wet your hair. Well, and maybe it's a long head of hair, and it's like well, know. I think I think that he probably had dreads, or do you think he's got? I don't dreads? think you can wash your hair when you have dreads. Well, because I don't I don't think oh because then they'll go they go. So I don't know what he's doing, but dreads. I mean, do, do you, at Parish of Blue. If you like dreads, you like dreads. I'm cool with that. But if you're getting dreads because you aren't washing your hair, then that's a different story. Still interested to see the photos uh, because they'd be early days dreads. They're not going to be – they wouldn't be sort of set in, you know, like uh, jungle dreads where they've been dreads for, for ages. Send it in a photo and we can make an assessment on what the fuck's going on. Like, there. do they look like jungle vines? Or are these things just starting to get into their work? There's a difference. Yes, there is. There's a big difference. Shout out to visors. Shout out to visors. Will we release a visor at some point? Don't know. That's not a no, though. Not it was yes. I don't know. Yeah. Not a yes, not a no. Let's go. Uh, that was the last one. I got a couple maybes that we can do. Or nah, nah, nah. I think that's good, Dave. Yeah. Fuck the maybes off. Fuck Let's start the again. The dribble's up and running. Send them in. Let's get after it, baby. Number in the bio on the Instagram. We'll see you on Wednesday with Bloke in the Bar and then Thursday with Hello Sport about even comes back in February. Until that time. Later. Bye-bye. Could you two just not talk anymore? <laughs>